This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want right here. Toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the website. You can actually create the content right there at the front page. Those news items that you see as you scroll down were all, all of them, submitted by listeners like you. Every now and then, Mark, you and I might throw something up there, but that's pretty occasional. Like 99.9% of yeah. the content there uh, has been put there by listeners like you. Maybe it was you. So go there and get uh, creative, get editing, throw something up on our site at freetalklive.com. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. Uh, so I've been teasing this story for a couple days now, and I, wa- I want to get to it because we've been following the saga of the ride-sharing companies. Uh, on this show for the last few years since they've basically come across our radar. Uh, Uber, Lyft, these are two of the more popular ones. These are, uh, have either of you ever taken an Uber or Lyft ride? No, not I. I have not either. I tried once. It was in uh, Austin, Texas. Mark, you were there. Yes. Uh, we uh, we had arrived at the airport and realized we didn't take care of our, our travel plans once we got to the airport, so we were desperately trying to figure out what to do, and I thought, ah, Uber, let's try this. We've been talking about it. So I downloaded the app, and uh, then Uber apologized when I ran the app because Austin, Texas is one of the many cities around the country that is effing with uber and trying to do everything they can to put a stop to their business uber is just a little too weird for austin (laughs) right so uh now of course not just austin as i pointed out before there's uh, headlines that seoul in south korea is threatening to crack down on uber and now also the story i've had for a few days memphis from benswan.com memphis has created a task force to arrest and fine uber and lyft drivers wow The popular rideshare companies Uber and Lyft have been forced to do battle for the right to do business against overzealous bureaucrats and antiquated livery regulations in cities, counties, and states across the U.S. A recent dust-up with Virginia regulators ended in victory as the state backed off of its cease-and-desist order against the innovative startups. Rideshare services have quickly become an excellent source of part-time employment for people struggling to find jobs and may be reducing drunk driving fatalities, both of which, it would seem, would help politicians meet policy goals. However, WREG Television is reporting that Memphis city officials responding to complaints by... Uh, Taxi cab drivers. That's right. And their unions and their owners. By local taxi drivers are focusing their energies on enforcing out-of-date livery regulations that were designed long before the innovative technology behind Uber and Lyft existed, rather than trimming regulations to fit with modern business models. The city of Memphis has issued a cease and desist order against the rideshare companies, which Uber and Lyft intend to defy. However, in order to add teeth to the city's threats, a police task force has reportedly been created to fine and arrest the company's drivers. Mm. Now, I'm going to stop the story here just to give you a little more information in case you don't know. Uber and Lyft, and uh, I think another one, there's a couple others out there. These are ride-sharing services you get on this service. You can offer rides, basically, to people if your car meets certain qualifications. Basically, there's Ride some sharing. Rules. I mean, so you, you know, I mean, I think that the idea was is to sort of help people do carpooling, sort of initially, or that's mm-hmm. the the idea. Uh, but what it's turned into is essentially uh, jitney cabs. It's a business. It's yeah. people helping people get from point A to point B. But they call it ride sharing because these people aren't, you know, they're not part of a taxi company. Uber and Lyft aren't taxi companies. They don't have dispatchers. It's just software that helps link buyers with providers, mm-hmm. you're basically independent contractors, essentially. And uh, it's a huge threat to the existing taxis. You can't call it a monopoly, oligopoly, perhaps, a, yeah. a group of uh, established businesses who like the way things have been for the last, as long as there have been cars. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. now things are, are, you know, their business model has been threatened by these well, new upstarts. Livery. I understand the, the Uber drivers are really beholden to their to their ratings, that Uber cuts that's them right. loose if they get below 4.6 out of 5. Wow, that's awesome. Jeez. Um, uh, yeah, livery was something that was going on before cars. This is, I mean, this is how old, uh, you know, what they're do, what the, the, the model of taxi cabs is. So according to the story, at issue are permits, vehicle inspections, and the associated fees that the city collects, which are a significant burden for part-time rideshare drivers 
Aubrey Howard, chief official at the Memphis Permits Department, told WREG Television, quote, we are not attempting to curtail commerce. What we want is if they're going to do business here, they have to follow the rules. Reportedly, drivers... It's like, <laughs> we'll just make any old rule we want, and then you're bad if you don't follow it. Mm-hmm. Reportedly, drivers caught working for Uber and Lyft could be arrested, fined up to $400, and face suspension of their driver's licenses. Uh, Aubrey Howard at Memphis Permits says, quote, We think sending out a task force will make these companies move a little faster. He confessed that the industry is evolving and may need updated laws. Memphis license administrators characterize the rideshare companies as bullies. They're bullies. The rideshare companies are bullies. These are the innovators, the upstarts, the people who've come into the marketplace with something unique, a neat service to offer to people that changes the way business has been done. Well, that's what the people who created the, uh, the you know, that's what the people who made candles thought about the light bulb manufacturers. That they were bullies. They're God. They're driving us out of business. The people who, uh, you right. know, made horseshoes thought that these cars, oh, if you go more than 15 miles an hour, it will suck the air <laughs> out of your lungs. I mean, they're dangerous. And and the the taxi cab drivers, I'm sure, are completely sold on the idea of of the medallions and of the bureaucracy. And the Uber people are just coming in and stealing from them. They're stealing well, from it's them. Not and stealing. They, no, it isn't. You're it's you're not right. Stealing. It's not stealing. It's at only all. stealing if you own something. If if you have something that is yours, it's your property. These customers aren't your property, right? So the taxi cab customers. Yeah. Well, what I mean is, it's like the they're it's it's. It, it, it is perceived as though they're stealing their medallions right, from yeah. them. They took our jobs. That's the way they see it. Mm -hmm. It's that whole protectionist racket. You, the customer, have no volition. You do not get to choose. You should not have competition. There should not be disruption in the marketplace. Th innovation should not occur. We should not do things better, cheaper, uh, more efficiently. You... The customer should have to pay, you know, two dollars and fifteen cents every eighth of a mile, and you know, a buck fifty whenever I flip the switch, and um, another two fifty every uh, <laughs> ten minutes that I have to wait. And, you know, whatever this arbitrary number that they came up with. Mm -hmm. No, no, this is, you know, this is the internet age, and I'm sorry, your old model stinks. Taxi companies in the city currently have to pay for permits, vehicle inspections, and background checks, regulations which do hurt taxi drivers in a time in which rideshare companies are growing in popularity. Uber and Lyft do have internal safety policies which include vehicle inspections and higher insurance standards than the city of Memphis even requires. WREG talked to a local Uber and Lyft driver named VJ. That's interesting. I didn't know you could work for both companies at the same time. Uh, named VJ about the issue, who said she would defy the cease and desist order. Quote, the letter went to Uber and Lyft, not to us. So as far as I'm concerned, Memphis hasn't told me personally anything. She I also, don't care if they have, but okay. She also indicated that Uber is encouraging drivers to continue working despite the ban. And this sounds familiar because when our uh, listener uh, Uber George called in from Virginia, that was when Virginia's state government had issued a cease and desist to Uber Similar to what's happening in Memphis, but it was statewide for all of Virginia. Mm. And Uber had sent an email out to all their drivers saying, look, we've got your back. If they come after you, we'll cover the cost of defense. So giving their drivers the the, the added oomph, the, the little lift sure. they might need to take that risk. Because this is risky. You could end up in handcuffs if you're an Uber or Lyft driver in Memphis, Tennessee, or in many other places where... Memphis is just the first to create a police task force to do this investigation. That doesn't mean there aren't detectives or others who are also considering doing sting operations and or operating them right now in other cities. Or didn't do the, make the task force without uh, telling the news. Exactly. So we'll keep you in the loop as we learn more about the continued drama with Uber and Lyft. I find it fascinating. And what I love about it, of course, is that Uber and Lyft aren't bending over in all the cases for the cities. They're standing up. They're at the very least standing up for the right to do business and innovate. Because if we don't have innovation in the world of business, then we're just stagnating, and that's no good for consumers. It's no good for the world. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you want to share your thoughts. It's Free Talk Live. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. 
If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, we invite you to take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. All you have to do is send a quick contact request. It will be approved once we get around to seeing it. And uh, then from that point on, it'll be easy for you to call us on Skype. With you in studio tonight, Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And we'll continue with your calls in moments. You can get your Bitcoins by going to expresscoin.com. They make it easy for you. Not just Bitcoin, but all kinds of other cryptocurrencies available there at ExpressCoin. They ex- they pride themselves on their customer service. They make it easy, fast, safe, inexpensive and completely legal for you to get cryptocurrencies of all sorts. 
Um, I, personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Bitcoin, but they've also got the Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. They're available in Canada. All you have to do is send a check, money order, wire transfer, or you can go to a local credit union in your town that has shared branching. Make a deposit there in an account and have your Bitcoins within a business day. They make it easy for you at ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app. It's ExpressCoin.com. I got to get that. Got to get that app. Let's go to Tom in Nashua, New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Tom. Uh, yeah, it's about the stuff that's going on with the local supermarkets here in uh, New Hampshire. As you may know, uh, well, you don't have a market basket there in Keene, but you do have one nearby in Swansea. It's and, pretty much the same uh, place, Tom, just so you know, Keene and Swansea. Swansea's like South Keene, basically. Go ahead. But uh, th what's go been going on is uh, these uh, workers, uh, including senior management, they really like the CEO, the former CEO who got fired. See, uh, mm -hmm. he gave big uh, bonuses, some you know, profit-sharing bonuses, and the board of directors didn't like that. But if he's giving big profit-sharing bonuses, that must mean they're making big profits to share. Indeed. And so he must be doing some, something right. Yeah, and it's always – I'm uh, um, working as a salesperson um, in ad sales uh, most of my adult life. I found it always kind of strangely – Amusing and disconcerting when um, the you know the employer didn't want people in sales to make good money. Um, I mean, you know, if your employers are doing well, you're doing well. Uh, to be you know to to eye their paychecks greedily is contrary to good business. It is, and uh, see, it's easy to side with the workers, the people who bag the groceries are the little guy and uh, they want they're getting these uh, bonuses and the prices are low uh, it and uh, the CEO decided uh, to have this big sale for a year where everything is four percent off and so uh, the customers like that too so they like this guy and the board of directors says we don't like him because uh, we're greedy or that's the way it's being portrayed mm -hmm. and can you believe it some of the senior management uh, were leading workers in walkouts and a revolt, and the company had the nerve to fire them for that? Isn't it positively scandalous? You, you fire somebody just for leading employees on a revolt. But uh, the thing is, the customers are shopping elsewhere because here's this bandwagon, here's this movement, here's this power thrill that we can, we're going to force Market Basket to rehire that CEO or else everybody's walking off the job and all the customers are going to stop coming in. Checkmate. It's a power thrill and it's totally risk-free from my point of view as a customer i just go shop somewhere else and what even if they what are they going to do can't, just tell me i can't come back into the store then uh, i can still feed my family so it's real easy for a lot of the customers to just go shop somewhere else even though the prices are a bit higher uh for now but if well they, there's no if the prices aren't higher if the food's not on the shelf right like so right yeah. now this Market Basket thing, Market Basket, I think, is a Northeast regional uh, chain, but I could be wrong. I don't really know. I know they're definitely in the Northeast. Yeah. I'm sorry? Massachusetts and New Hampshire, 71 uh, stores from okay. what I've been reading. So and that's, they uh, are literally, there's literally no food on some of the shelves at the Market Basket store, like produce, for instance. It's just no, not there. Right. This is, the I've seen the photos. People warehouse people walk off the job and it's like, hey, uh, board of directors, guess what? I mean, this is our way of saying check me. It's, I think it's the thrill of for some customers, it's doing the right thing. For some customers, it's worried that the prices are going to go up. What are you saying is doing the right thing? That's what I'm confused about. What are you What are you advocating? What side are you taking a uh, side in this? Or are you just like watching with the popcorn uh, and you know, <laughs> waiting to see what, what happens? I'm watching with the popcorn myself, but uh, the uh, the fired CEO is uh, getting all the support from the workers, mm -hmm. and it's easy to take the side of these workers against the uh, the board of directors because uh, if the board of directors wants to raise the prices, then that uh, you know for, for one thing that that's uh, going to be. Uh, 
to detrimental to the customers. So uh, I, I say, what, what's the doing the right thing? They're just uh, trying to, to make more money, and uh, we like Arthur T. And the customer is always right. So this is the thing that is, I, I think, I'll, for a lot of the customers, joining in the revolt is a way of. Uh, jumping on a bandwagon and mm. enjoying the power of the customer is always ah, right. I see where you're and coming from. Gonna, okay, I get your point there. Yeah, it it yeah, may very well going, be, but I've got to say that Market Basket is a really great grocery store. And I've only been there once or twice. I've been there quite a few times. Uh, it's not it's it's not convenient for us to go to um, as far as you know location and that kind of thing, so we don't go there. By, my, by no means do we go there every time. But... I mean, you know, when you like a grocery store, you like a grocery store. And when customers have that kind of reaction to your business, it's really good. It's it's very difficult. Look at the other the other grocery stores in town. I've never heard anyone rave about Market Basket or rave about the other grocery stores the way they do about Market Basket. That's yeah. really tough to buy. If you no, buy the way you get that is because of good employees. The way you get good employees is what the CEO has done, and they're getting rid of him. They're just turning Market Basket into another boring, banal, uh, you know, grocery what, store. Let me point. Let me point something out here uh, that. Uh, what I've been doing when I go to the other stores is I talk to the manager about uh, giving jobs to some of those workers because I can attest as a customer, as a regular customer uh, for many years at the local market basket that they are very good workers. I never had any trouble getting help, the help I needed, and they're always uh, glad that they can help me uh, get what I'm looking for. So uh, in that respect, putting in a good word for them to the managers of the other stores that have swamped with all these customers and trying to keep up with the demand they, they're hiring. So uh, that's one now, what's way happening to help at the market desk? I mean, I don't, I haven't been following. I have to admit, the first day I've actually done any research on this was today, and it's been developing for several days yeah. up here. It's the, actually been developing for months, for, but yeah. Okay, well, it's going on it's for decades, unreal. actually. But uh, Tom, go ahead. It's like unreal to walk into a supermarket and see signs apologizing for the empty shelves and saying that this wouldn't have happened if the board of directors hadn't fired Arthur T. DeMola. Wow. It's Thank like, you for I the mean, call I tonight, mean, Tom. I appreciate yeah. it. The toll-free number. It's a mess. I mean, and we can talk more about it. I've got uh, some background information on how it all got this way. It's crazy. 855-450-FREE. You take control of Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. Imagine for a moment 
a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you like by dialing in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So, also, if you need focus and you're feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, you really need to look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. And over at modup.net, they provide only the highest premium modafinil with the best potency so you enjoy the uh, significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. And ModUp.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You can order from ModUp.net and get 33% off when you pay with Bitcoin. Make the deal even better, use code FTL, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So use code FTL at ModUp.net. It's great service at a great price. ModUp. M-O-D-U-P dot net. Use code FTL. As we continue here, we can give you more information on this situation, which is resulting in food being off of the shelves at a grocery store in the Northeast. Uh, several grocery stores, a whole chain of them, actually. Market Basket is the name of this store. Mark, you sound like a regular shopper at the uh, the Market Basket. Well, I'm, I don't do the shopping in my home for food, but uh, Market Basket is the farthest grocery store from our house in the uh, metro. Mm -hmm. We go there when we can, but not oh, regular. Oh, so you're not regular. Okay. Uh, you were singing its praises in the last It's a break, great grocery so store. That, uh, that you were a regular. Uh, yeah, I've been there a couple times. I've heard people raving about it, and I guess the what has happened has been an absolute debacle where the staff of the stores, many of them are actually protesting they are on strike, even though there's not a union present at Market Basket. In fact, one could argue that one of the reasons why Market Basket has, has such low prices is they don't have union uh, unionized employees. Well, apparently they have a union of sorts, just not a union under some large blanket, right? Like, well, right. There's no dues they're organized. being paid. <laughs> they're orga somebody's organizing here, but there are no dues being paid that I know of. There's no... 
you know, like at uh, at certain grocery stores, in order to work there, you have to be a member of sure. some sort of grocer's union. Uh, that is not present at the Market Basket stores. We've got Tom in, a different Tom, in Michigan City, listening to WIMS. Hello, Tom. Hi, how you doing? Hey, welcome. What's on your mind tonight? Um, I was talking about the um, Uber thing. Uh, I was in Moscow back in um, 2000, year 2000. And they had something similar to this long before the internet craze came in. Okay, and what was that? And uh, they, well, basically, they would hold out their finger or fingers down low, and like with almost like your thumb out, and people would stop by, and they would negotiate at that point where they wanted to go, um, how it worked. And basically, that's what would happen: is that you would they would stop, and you would negotiate. And if they were going your direction or if you were going their direction, they would pick you up and you'd pay them a few rubles and, you know, go on your way. Hmm. Um, it, so is it, it kind of really like hitchhiking with money? Yeah, that's exactly what it really was. It was hitchhiking with money. Um, and people would pay for their cars that way. Um, and, of course, at that time, the economy was really bad in Russia. And so, they, you know, they were doing anything possible to stay afloat. Neat. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's fascinating. I'm, it kind of, you know, it's interesting that the hitchhiking culture here in the United States, what there is left of it, because mostly people won't pick up hitchhikers any longer. Um, it doesn't. It never. It never really seemed to include money for gas or something like that. Right. Well, this this worked fairly good. Um, it was interesting. Of course, I don't speak Russian, and uh, there was like eight of us in our party, so we had to split up. And so the guy who did speak Russian. He negotiated for us to get a ride in this one um, car, and then he got into another car later on. And um, as we were going on, the car started smoking, and, <laughs> and the guy, you could say, was swearing in Russian. And then all of a sudden, he pulled over and said, get out. <laughs> well, that ride doesn't sound like it worked out of- perfect. Yeah, we were sort of stranded there, and then, of course, the other car luckily saw us, because otherwise we'd have been stranded in Moscow without knowing anything about this. Yeah, it makes me wonder what happens when a, when an Uber car breaks down. Uh, if you are in someone's car, it's an Uber driver, and there's a car, there's car trouble— Will another Uber driver come pick you up? Uh, is there a tow I service? They would at some point. Yeah, I just wonder. <laughs> I just wonder what you know. What's the process to to handle that within the the Uber company? How do they deal with that? Tom, uh, anything else you want to share tonight? Well, the other thing is, and this is a really difficult question because I'm I'm very much a, a free person and, and libertarian, but the concept that these taxi people have relied on the government to regulate their business and. I've heard that they pay close to five hundred thousand dollars for some of their medallions. Oh yeah, it depends and, on the market. In I've New heard, York City, that's uh, that can be true. I've heard New York City's up to a million now, but uh, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. So, but if, can you imagine if you actually played by the rules, if you want to call it that, and spent a million dollars, you know, maybe four years ago or something like that? And then this thing goes along and actually puts them out of business. Um, because I, I can see where you could feel like you got cheated, and I certainly don't think the government's going to refund that money. No, but it's true. You did get cheated. I mean, you gave a criminal gang, a criminal enterprise, a uh, million dollars or $500,000, so they would allow To enjoy you to... exclusivity and artificially created exclusivity right. in the marketplace. So they would ostensibly protect you. Um, but you know they're a criminal gang, and if they screw you on the deal, then there's not much you can do about it, right? Right, and of course we're realizing the criminal gang is the government. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> the, biggest, the biggest organized crime. You got it, Tom. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty free. Whether you're a driver for Uber or Lyft or a passenger. Certainly, you're welcome to share your thoughts on the continuing crackdown that these poor people are experiencing. Just trying to give rides to people, man. And it's just, it's gone on for a long time. I mean, they were even targeting people since before Uber and Lyft. I remember the story from years ago of the grandfatherly gentleman who picked up a woman, an attractive young woman at a local grocery store. I think it was in Miami. Turns out she was an undercover uh, cop or working with the police. And Well, he didn't even want to take any money from her. That's right. She f- tried to offer him like five bucks for the ride home, which she'd asked for, what was ostensibly her home. 
and uh, he refused initially the $5, yep. but then at reluctantly point, accepted it At from some her. point with her cajoling, um, she was able to give him some money for gas. Yeah, and uh, then he got arrested for it. So because God be- knows if you're an undercover cop um, and you, you you know you take the ride, you wouldn't want to just leave the guy alone um, if he said no thanks to the money. You got to keep on pressuring him. Well, you got to get the arrests. Right. I mean, you know, I spent an hour or an hour and a half uh, on this uh, undercover thing. I, I I can't just go away without getting you know. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, Can't do the right thing and ultimately, leave somebody alone. if you wander up to somebody and to try to try and try and try to give them money, sooner or later they're going to take it from you just yeah. to make you go, go away, away, you crazy person. Right? That's not uh, that's not justification for throwing somebody in jail. Now, Ian, I've got uh, a perspective. I'd like to get your yeah perspective on. Last week, I was listening to Econ Talk. The guest was Michael Munger from Duke University, I think, and he was talking about Uber. And he likened a, kind of tongue-in-cheek, I think, he likened a medallion to the deed that he had to a stand of, of pine trees, uh, a deed of land to, to a bunch of timber. Yeah. And he both could, it could be argued, are legal fictions. So if some, some guys were chopping his chopping his trees down and and he went to uh to see what was going on they would say well you know this is um hey dude you don't own the land anyway man the you, trees are given to us by god your de- your deed to the land is just an old fashioned sort of a thing and it's going away in the new world yeah i think the difference is is that um you know you can you can show ownership of the land uh, justifiably the government really can't show ownership of my uh, taxi cab dollar We will come back with more. You can share your thoughts, whether it is the under-fire ride-sharing services or empty grocery shelves. We'll talk about it. It's Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No No Pro risk free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no no. Great minds do think alike. <laughs> <laughs> try No No Pro risk free by calling 800 9 Check, check, check. Check, check, check. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. 
Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever's on your mind tonight at 855-450 free as with every night 855-450-3733 we've got a website you can go there and enjoy the features waiting for you those other talk show hosts in the world most of them want to charge you for their sites ours is free so go over and enjoy at freetalklive.com and you can help support the show by becoming a free talk live amplifier amp stands for advertise market and promote and all we're asking for is five bucks a month we take that money in invest it into free talk live Get on more radio stations. I got a, an agreement from a couple of new stations in New Jersey uh, today, as a matter of fact. Bringing some freedom to New Jersey. Yep, looking forward to being able to make the official announcement about that once the stations come on board. But it's uh, it's money from the AMP program that helps us bring new radio stations on, helps us fund satellite channels to broadcast uh, on or to different parts of the globe, hopefully more soon. And uh, send us to industry conventions and things like that to sort of press the flesh. We also do advertising with Google AdWords and bring internet listeners in that way. So your five bucks a month goes a long way towards reaching new people with the ideas of freedom. Please go to amp.talklive.com. You can get signed up there with any major credit card through PayPal. Uh, you can also do uh, Visa and MasterCard right on our website at amp.freetalklive.com. And you get perks as well. So for quite a while, this last week... There's been a lot in the news, a lot of pictures on Facebook from the shelves of a place called Market Basket. Now, Market Basket is, as I understand it, kind of like a discount grocer, but not not quite to the point of like a big lots or, as they call them, o- Ocean State job lots, c- sort of clearance warehouse stores. Yeah, not, not to that kind, point. Right. It's not the kind where you have to bring your own cardboard box to uh, carry the stuff away, but they do have a lot of their own brands and, um, you know, they're brands are often quite good they bring people in with loss leaders mm-hmm. very good ones and they just they, they do something different because they're able to offer quite low pricing with a largely uh, normal grocery store experience and then there's just, just the sort of atmosphere of people working there are happy so apparently the people that are working there are not happy right now and many of them are not working because they've decided to go on strike in support of one of the CEOs, the the previous CEO, who apparently was just recently ousted by the board of directors of the organization. And there's a, a long sort of a backstory that goes into this. Now, I didn't know any of this until today. There's a website called the Gloucester Clam. And I don't know if that's, I guess that's Massachusetts. Gloucester. Gloucester. Anyway, the Gloucester Clam Market uh, Market Basket's storied history of crazy. Most of you are probably aware, unless you live under a rock or in West Gloucester. That <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's Gloucester. Gloucester? Okay. I don't I, think, I think, they I don't think Ian's doing poorly with it. Um, I, I, and I think the, the New Englanders pronounce it Gloucester. I don't believe that. I can't believe they would pronounce an E-R in New England. Gloucester. Gloucester. Okay. Gloucester? I don't know. I don't claim to know how these things well, go. He's he's not doing bad for somebody who's not from here yeah, attempting to replicate accent. it. I really um, don't. You know, I mean that 
I, I and, and to some extent, I don't mind lampooning the way they talk here because, for God's sake, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> Just take a take a look at uh, Worcester and how they spell that. Mm-hmm. W O R C Worcester E S T E R. Anyway, Worcesta. moving on. Uh, right. So this actually Glau C E S T E R. So shouldn't it be Glausta? I mean, it's actually spelled. The end of Gloucester is spelled the same as Worcester. So y- yes. So it's shouldn't stir. It be, shouldn't it be? It's not Sester. Right. Glau. Okay. So, but then maybe it should just be Glausta. But I don't think it's Glau. I think it's Gla. Glas. Glasta. <laughs> 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 anyway, welcome to New England. Uh, so, back to the story here, the the history behind this protest, because the store shelves are empty, and Americans aren't used to dealing with stuff no, like that. No, they're not. So, what's the backstory here? Well, there's upheaval going on at the local beloved discount grocery chain, but why, you ask? All right, let's dissect it. It is a soap opera of epic proportions, and it's going to take two days. Fasten your seatbelts and crack open a beer or eight. Back in my first business law class, discussing the Demolis case took up more than one full week of class, and this was years before this current drama. At the end, half the class still walked out whispering, what the F even happened? Is there some kind of elaborate flowchart regarding this case? Where do JFK and the stripper fit in? <laughs> Let's turn the clam time machine back to 1916 and start this off Shall we? There's a lot of cursing in here that I'm editing out, by the way. So back then, a Greek immigrant named Anastasios Arthur Demolis and his wife started a tiny grocery in Lowell, Massachusetts, selling fresh lamb. Uh, selling fresh lamb. That was it. Those um, Greeks are wizards yeah. at entrepreneurship. American dream, y'all. <laughs> there's, they say. there's this saying that if you give a Greek man a sandwich, he'll cut it in half and, uh, <laughs> and open a restaurant. And I told this when I was in... Crete to a a tour guide who was, you know, she was very interested in coming to the United States. And I think that, you know, she had something arranged for that or Mm -hmm. whatever. And so she's like, what do people in the United States think of Greek people? And I I don't think people in the United States think of Greek people very much, except they have nice restaurants, right? Like, you know, oh, good. They have restaurants. But I, I, this is the one sort of thing that I'd heard about Greek people. So I'm like, I, I shared that one piece of information and she kind of furrowed her brow and thought about it. And she said, does this mean that they think that they're good businessmen or does this thing mean that they think they're miserly? And I'm like, <laughs> I think that those things are just the same thing, right? Like a good businessman is, is to miserly, some extent miserly, yeah. you know, and I, it's just how one chooses to view being a good businessman. I've always, uh, you know, I mean, I've I've always respected the, the Greeks for their sort of, uh, you know, uh, love of family and doing good business and things like that. But I'm sure that there are people out there that just think that they're, you know, mean little misers or whatever. I have no idea. Well, that's what this market basket conflict is going to break down to, as the article will explain, is that this, I, this now ousted CEO, who was li- literally just released not too long ago, apparently, he was known as being this generous individual to the employees, and uh, and they're upset that he's gone because they feel like the board of directors is trying to basically, you know, screw them, uh, cut them. They back. know what's they know what's coming. Yeah, that uh, you know the the glory days are over, and that they're going to try to cut costs and cut costs to the bone, and uh, and that's going to hurt the employees and from what they're used to getting. So uh, back to the story. So they, uh, you know, this. Greek couple, the Demolis family, they've moved to Lowell, Massachusetts in the uh, in 1916. They're selling lamb, and they do this, uh, and being a family-owned business, eventually pass it off to their two sons, Telemachus, a.k.a. Mike, because no one can pronounce Telemachus, and George. <laughs> the brothers expand the business to a supermarket chain of more than a dozen stores in the 50s and 60s. It's going well, right? That's until George dies of a heart attack on vacation in Greece in 1971. Then, S starts getting real. Mike now... Yasu. I don't know. They just use an ex- explanation sometimes. Mike now o- uh, owns this huge empire, and although the brothers had promised to take care of each other's families in the event one of them died, Mike slowly went full a-hole instead. Although at first he bought George's widow and the children everything that kids love, like condos and liquor stores, he eventually sneakily had them signing paperwork that gave himself more control of the company. George's family didn't really have the business experience their father had and trusted their uncle to handle things like he'd promised. Well, Mike. You know, this is one of the things that's very difficult um, is is that, you know, the people that make themselves, uh, they they, they make their own business. Mm -hmm. 
their kids oftentimes have no motivation to learn these skills. Well, it's like new money. I mean, they don't know where it came from. They don't understand how the it, the business was created from scratch. They weren't there for it. They don't have the appreciation for coming up through the ranks. It's just an expectation that they're going to, that life is going to be good because life has been good up to this point. And, uh, you know, I find it very disconcerting. It's something I try very hard with um, with my son is to, you know, show, show him the value of the dollar and, and things like that. But I get the feeling that, um, you know, people just have to come to a certain age before they're even willing to, to pay attention to these things. So Mike explained to George's family that he had opened the market basket chain to circumvent the laws limiting liquor licenses to one company. He had George's widow removed from the board of directors over her involvement with another man, and eventually he left George's family with a pittance compared to what the chain's worth should have been at that point by moving assets into secondary companies owned only by his side of the family, including Lee Drug, which is a chain they sold to Walgreens for major bucks. In 1990, George's family gets tax notices about the sale of company stock. This immediately sets off their BS detectors because, to their knowledge, they hadn't sold any stock. So the family figures out what's going on and sues Mike. It takes years, and it's an insane court battle worthy of a lifetime special. Cousins punch each other in the back of courtrooms, and eventually a state policeman has to be present at every hearing to limit the punchings. (laughs) George's son dies, and family members are barred from the funeral. Six lawsuits span the 1990s. Every lawyer in the state seemed to be involved. Mike's family had 19 lawyers at one point involved with the case. Wow. Coming up, we'll tell you how the stripper fu- uh, oh, figures into the story here in moments. You can take control of the airwaves here. 855 450 free. Store shelves are empty in one grocery chain here in the Northeast. We're giving you the backstory. It's Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, July 22nd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,316. Silver is trading around $21.06. While Bitcoin is trading around with Doug Stephanie's 25 cents support for Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Find them online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, the government is seeking more than 800 million dollars that they say FedEx earned for shipping drugs from two Internet pharmacies, as reported by The Washington Post. The U.S. District Court in California filed a 15-count indictment against the delivery service 
last Thursday, alleging the company knew it was delivering drugs to dealers and addicts. FedEx denies the charges, arguing that monitoring packages for illegal substances isn't their job because they aren't law enforcement. The indictment states that a catch-all category, which was not tied to yearly sales goals or specific employees, allowed the company to take money from fly-by-night businesses. FedEx is due in court on July 29. On Monday, the Detroit Water and Sewage Department decided to suspend mass water shutoffs in Detroit for 15 days. Department spokesman Bill Johnson told the Detroit News that the city was not stopping the shutoffs completely, but rather pausing to give an opportunity to customers who have had trouble paying their bills to make arrangements. The department has faced criticism from around the globe for shutting off water to thousands of customers since March. A new investigation by USA Today calls into question the methods used by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives when conducting drug sting operations. By analyzing U.S. court files and prison records, USA Today found that 91% of people arrested for drug stings are racial or ethnic minorities. Also of concern is the ATF's tactic of offering suspected criminals hundreds of thousands of dollars in rewards for robbing fake drug stash houses. Similar to the FBI and trapping suspected terrorists, the ATF creates new crimes rather than solving old ones. The drug sting operations have quadrupled in the last decade. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering Pro Pure Water Filtration, the only gravity driven all in one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, July 22nd. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Last week, Australia became the first developed nation to abolish the controversial carbon emission tax, as reported by the Russian Times. Prime Minister Tony Abbott, who heads the Liberal Nationals Coalition, promised to replace the tax with a government fund of $2.55 billion, which will be paid to industries working towards reducing emissions and using cleaner energy. The Australian Senate voted 39-32 to 32 to end the tax, which in 2012 charged nearly 350 major polluters $22.60 for every ton of greenhouse gas produced. The California State's Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources issued a cease and desist order earlier this month after officials warned that companies may have been pumping fracking fluids and other toxic waste into drinking aquifers. At least 11 oil and gas waste injection sites were immediately shut down until a review can be completed. The action comes as California's agriculture industry struggles to cope with a drought that's emptied reservoirs, costing the state more than $2 billion this year. The Obama administration announced its plans to reopen the U.S. eastern seaboard for offshore oil and gas exploration, despite the threat to sea life. Environmental groups attempted to extend a decades-old ban against drilling off the Atlantic coast by illustrating the dangers of sonic cannons, which emit powerful pulses of sound into the ocean to help locate energy deposits. These sound pulses have been known to greatly affect sea life, including dolphins, turtles, and whales, disrupting their natural sonar and, in some cases, causing death. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal. Affordable, high-quality printing. Now accepting Bitcoin. Online at MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, July 22nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. McDonald's is now offering bereavement prices, and a sexual predator gets tenure. This is the Onion Week in Review. This Wednesday, Samsung announced the release of its brand new really big f***ing television. Representatives for the South Korean electronics manufacturer told reporters at a press conference that the goddamn gargantuan of an electronics product boasted a variety of new features, including being super heavy and having a screen that was probably 100 f***ing inches wide for all they knew. We here at Samsung think this new product will appeal to today's consumers who are looking for a television that's really really huge. I mean, this thing is built like a f***ing truck. You, you just, you just
just really have to see it to believe it. In other news, an important decision is sent up to the company's highest idiot. And an area mother doesn't see why Thai people need to make food so spicy. Today's Onion Review was sponsored by Bamboo Garden, voted the best family-owned Chinese restaurant in Idaho for five years running. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Coming up, uh, the Boy Scouts encounter the Border Patrol. We will tell you what happened in that instance. Of course, your calls are certainly welcome about whatever happens to be on your mind. Dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. There's a situation that's been developing for, well, actually, apparently for decades, but more recently, it's really kind of bubbled over within the last week or so here in the Northeast, uh, northern New England, in Massachusetts, New Hampshire. There is a, a grocery chain called Market Basket. And uh, we're kind of talking about what's happening because people are protesting. Customers are protesting. The uh, store's employees, many of them are involved in the protest. They're walk they've walked out of the store uh, in protest of the board of directors of the company ousting the longtime, very popular CEO of the organization, popular with the employees uh, because apparently there's an employee profit sharing plan. And I can tell you a little bit more about that here in a moment. That'll make you popular. I can't say I have intimate uh, relations with the store. I don't, uh, you know, I don't shop there very often. I like the 24-hour store in town, and Market Basket's hours suck. They only go until seven o'clock at night or something ridiculous like that. So I like to. Sometimes I like to do my shopping at 3 a.m. You know, and there's only one. When's store the last time you did it? I don't know. But uh, a long time, I I'm like sure. to know that it's there. No, it's not been that long. No, probably Market been... Basket doesn't close at 7 p.m. Really? I'd, I'd be astonished if that was true. I'm pretty true. sure if it's Sunday, they're closed at 7 o'clock. But, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Anyway, the thing that people like about the Market Basket store is that they're cheap. Uh, the food there is affordable. It's a regular brand name food that people are used to buying, but they would managed to do it for less. And I think it's just smart business all around. Like, for instance, the, the Market Basket here in the Keene area is actually not in Keene. It's in the town south of Keene, but it's literally on the town's border. I mean, literally on the border of Swansea and Keene, that's where they built this thing, right south of the border. So it's no longer in Keene, therefore not paying the exorbitant Keene property tax, for instance. And that's probably saving them a significant chunk of uh, over overhead sure every year. Is. So that's just one example of, you know, kind of the smart business moves these guys have made. Back to the story here. Let me give you a re uh, recap from the Glasta Clam from uh, Glastaclam.com. Where they're talking about the Demolis family uh, creating, you know, they moved from Greece in the early part of the 20th century. They opened up a lamb store. It turned into, after their sons took the business over, turned into a store of grocery, uh, or a chain of grocery stores. One of them died of a heart attack, and then the other son allegedly started to screw the other guy's family out of the money that they thought that they were going to get from him from operating this successful Sort of the business. shares of the company, I think. Yeah, and he ended up selling some of their shares without their permission. They went to court over that, and during the court situation, there was apparently fighting in the courtroom between family members. This is like a what has led up to the store shelves being empty this week and the store employees protesting and customers protesting and people walking out of their jobs was is a long line of many decades of family, like an interfamily dispute uh, with this store. So six lawsuits span the 1990s. Every lawyer in the state seems like they're involved. One side had 19 <laughs> lawyers at one point. Someone paid a stripper to testify against her ex-boyfriend. A juror offered to change his decision if he was given $220,000. Two of the lawyers... Why 220? I mean... Is not that a little odd for a number? Maybe he owed money on a mortgage or something. 200? Two hundred? Two of the lawyers. Two fifty. 
for Mike's family. Now, Mike is one of the brothers that died, the Demolis brothers. Or Mike's not the one who died. He's the one that survived. With the approval in uh, two of the lawyers, with the approval of his son, Arthur T. Demolis, secretly tape-recorded a law clerk saying incriminating things under the guise of a job interview to prove that the judge overseeing the case had already decided the outcome prior to hearing the arguments and is prejudiced against Mike Demolis. The clerk finds out that it's a setup and the FBI gets involved. The clerk is wired. The lawyers, one, a former assistant U.S. attorney, another, a former advisor to JFK, both say incriminating things themselves while wired. So the author here at Gloucester Clam says his head hurts trying to explain this, uh, but it's real. Uh, two of the lawyers ended up being disbarred at the end of the suit, and George's family was successful. The brother Mike was found to have defrauded them out of $500 million, and the judge forces 51% of the company to then be turned over to George's heirs. So that's one part of the story. Then that's one day. Then on the next day, which was today, they published the last kind of the update on the story. So what does Market Basket's checkered family past have to do with what's going on today? And why doesn't the basket have any salad fixings at all? You may recall that yesterday I explained that Mark's, or Mike's son, Arthur T. Demolis, was involved with his father's legal team in the whole secret recordings, blackmailing a court employee debacle. Well, now he's the center of today's fight, having just been ousted as CEO. So there's like this crazy back and forth going on here, right? So you've got the side of, um, there's two sides of the family, Mike mm -hmm. and George. Those are the two sons. George's family, George dies. His family then ends up suing Mike because he, they believe they were screwed out of the family fortune. The judge agreed. $500 million was essentially given over to George's side of the family in stock. They took control of the company, but yet somehow Mike's son ends up as CEO of the company. It's complicated, of course, says the article, like everything else involving the name Demolis. Anyway, after the lawsuits of the 90s and the aughts shake out, the judge forces Mike's side of the family to give up the 51% to George's side, and Mike's side of the family lost the lawsuits pretty soundly. It's hard to excuse flagrant fraud, forgery, and hiding assets from your family. Back in early 2008, Market Basket's board voted Arthur T. Demolis, again, that's George's son, uh, or no, Mike's son, <laughs> in as CEO. He's by all accounts a pretty reasonable guy, a reasonable guy who's hell-bent on treating his employees like family, or better than family, seeing as how the Demolis family has been beaten up and defrauded <laughs> right. uh, from each other for decades now. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not sure I want to be treated by, like family by these people. RDD is so reasonable that during the economic downturn, his profit-sharing employee account loses $46 million in a quarter, and he replaces those funds with his own company's profits so his employees don't suffer. This is relatively unheard of. All investment is risky, yeah. after all, and most people in America lost money from pensions or 401ks in 2008. This move majorly upsets his cousins on George's side of the family who like things like profits and whatnot. For five years, Arthur T. Demolis, despite his side of the family's past shady and questionable tactics, is a beloved CEO to his workers. He's described as an affable, friendly, and humble leader. He pays well. Employees have good health insurance. Workers trust him and are fervently loyal to him. But in the summer of 2013, Arthur T.'s cousin, get this, George's son, the other guy, yep. the guy who died. So Arthur T. is Mike's, Mike's son. son. George's son is also named Arthur, just to make things more confusing for you. <laughs> Arthur S. Demoulis is George's son. He gains control of Market Basket's board and calls a vote to oust his cousin, Arthur T., amid claims and a lawsuit that he alleged he mismanaged the company, engaged in improper business deals with other companies owned by his wife and her family, and withheld important information from the board. Meanwhile, Arthur S.'s side has long been painted as interested in as much money as possible from their holdings— Without putting the elbow grease in like Mike's right. family Right, and I, that's a re what I really get from this side of the family is is that they're really all about the money and not about doing any of the work. And being a CEO is work. Um, being involved in the management of a company is work. And you just want... You know, you just want your yachts and your, uh, you know, sip on your cocktails. It's hard for me to feel bad about you, for you. This move was seen as a way for George's side of the family to get dividends from their stock. There was a massive outpouring of support for Arthur T. Demolis. Employees who'd been at Market Basket for decades showed up for the board meeting and stood outside in the August heat just to support him. During the meeting, the board didn't oust him, and he saved his job for a bit. 
but Arthur S. continued to push for his cousin's dismissal. Finally, late last month, Arthur T. Demoulis was fired as CEO and replaced by a former Radio Shack executive named Jim Gooch and Felicia Thornton, the Gooch, former executive at Albertsons. A few upper-level executives were also fired at the same time. And then the S hit the effing fan, according to Glasta Clam. We'll continue with why it is that store shelves in this Northeast major market uh, chain, grocery chain, are empty. Many shelves empty, employees not showing up for work, and these aren't even union employees. These guys are pretty upset. That's what's going on here. Maybe you've got the inside scoop and you can share it with us. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 21st, 2014, gold opened at 13.13.10. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 13.60.73, 6.80.37 for a half ounce, or 3.40.18 for a quarter ounce. That's 13.60.73, 6.80.37, and 3.40.18. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This 
is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about grocery store shelves being empty. Uh, Certain market basket stores, maybe all of them, I don't know, but I've seen pictures from some of them where there are actual shelves empty of food, produce, for instance, uh, not coming in. Staff members, many of them are protesting. They're on strike, even though there's not actually a union officially in the Market Basket stores. This is a northeastern grocery chain. And we're kind of talking about what led up to this. But one thing's for sure, if you're not relying on the grocery stores to provide your coffee and you're relying on BuzzBox, that's going to show up to you at your house. You don't have to worry about some crazy grocery strike situation. You're going to get great coffee delivered to you. Yeah, BuzzBox coffee is it's shade grown, which is the way coffee was meant to be. Um, it uh, doesn't give you that acid, shade grown coffee doesn't give you that sort of acid reflux thing that uh, robusto beans do. It's also good for the soil, good for the uh, animals. Um, you don't think things are much better when you shade grow your coffee. It's more expensive. There's no doubt about it. But um, BuzzBox also makes sure it's 100% organic, which is you know important if you care about leaded fuel being. Uh, you know, the sort of residue falling on the, the land around where your coffee's grown and maybe some pesticides that would be outlawed in the United States aren't outlawed where your coffee's grown. It's top 1% grade Arabica beans, which uh, indisputably is the best coffee. And this is what sets BuzzBox apart in high-end coffees. But you can get high-end coffees. What you can't get is a company that cares as much about their uh, you know, coffee producing, the families that produce their coffee, and f- about helping people around the world. BuzzBox teams with organizations like Free Talk Live to uh, to be able to give money to, uh, through World Vision, to people to get microloans, which is a big deal. Um, you know, you get a little bit of money to be able maybe buy a plow or a sewing machine or some restaurant equipment or some kind of vehicle, maybe a bicycle, whatever it is you need to do business where you are. That's really what you're passionate about, and that's what's... We're, we're reading a story here about a, a family that moves to America and grows an empire from, you know, a company that sells lamb. And that's exactly the kind of entrepreneurship that we're trying to grow with uh, with the microloan program through BuzzBox. Go get your free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. You'll sign up for a subscription. You can cancel it at any time. You get your first pound of coffee. You're like, I don't like this. I don't want to get my coffee through BuzzBox. Fine. Cancel it anytime you want. But um, in please give it a try. Get the free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. We're going to get back to the latest on the market basket debacle. Uh, we're kind of giving you the history. And I'm learning this as I go, basically, because, I mean, I, the only research I've done on this was today, even though grocery store shelves have been empty for several days up here. And this is a real situation for the folks that are working for the company. And the customers, uh, of course, are used to going and shopping there, and they're finding it much more difficult now with uh, certain things sold out. Let's go to uh, Ken. He's in Haverhill, Massachusetts. You're on Free Talk Live. Ken. Hey, good to talk to you guys. Hey, um, yeah, I'm right. Uh, I live in Haverhill. We have uh, three market baskets. I've, I've lived in this town for uh, a little over a decade, and um, uh, it's... Um, I, I, I got to say, it's like every family members of mine, when I tell them about Market Basket and uh, the prices and the kind of things I can get, they're quite envious of me. Mm-hmm. I mean, wh- wh- I, the, 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 mel- the family melodrama, I've only become aware of within the past year or so, but um, – it's it's uh, it, it's a really good store. I mean, it's like um, it, it, not only just the prices, but just um, like as like kind of a foodie. Like over the holidays, like over Easter, I was able to get like lamb kidney for recipes because yeah, th- there's like Greek stuff. It's a Greek family, and um, I don't know. It's if if. Um, I'm, I'm kind of watching the whole situation with bated breath because if um, if it gets sold out, uh, the prices go up, et cetera. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. There's like there's a BJ's wholesale. Well, there's an so Aldi. It's pretty clear that you like. Out. It's pretty clear that you like the store. We don't really need to know what the competition is. 
but you're watching this right. as a fan of the store. And do you have your, uh, you know, are you throwing the bets in any one corner here? Is it even easy to take a side in this? Because it seems like, uh, you know, one side has screwed the other back and forth in this, the Mullis family uh, for decades here. It's hard to really decide who the good guy is. Although if you fast forward to current reality, the... Uh, it's hard to call this Arthur T., a bad guy. Right. The simple he fact that like he the is the guy. progeny that, yeah. of Mike doesn't make him um, bad guy, you know, yeah. the, the bad guy. So even his if Mike... dad screwed some people over, apparently, in the past, but he hasn't, there's no evidence necessarily, or at least that I've seen so far, maybe there is, uh, that he has done something, the, the former current CEO, the guy who was just ousted. Uh, but what do you think? I mean, as a, as a customer, having observed all of this, I mean, is there anybody here who's clearly in the wrong? It's interesting. It's like you, 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 but it's like observed all of it. I, I, you know, it's all I, all I can say. I mean, I haven't borne witness to all the uh, in whatever kind of family backstabbing might have gone on. Right. I don't really, yeah, you know, I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't see any of that. But what I can say is, it's it's a remarkably good store. Okay. I mean, it's like when I compare it to the, you know, I'm not going to name anybody, but competition. It's very good. All right. Ken, thanks um, for the call tonight, man. I appreciate. I definitely appreciate that. Good to know. You know, a lot of people are big fans of, uh, of this store. Yeah, I, I think that's what's what we a lot of what we're seeing at, at play here is, is that customers are passionate about Market Basket and in a way that is difficult to have people passionate about your brand. And I, I think that that's what's that's a lot of power on the side of the Arthur T folks here. Um, that's is the to former have, CEO. Yeah, the the former CEO. That's uh, that's a lot of power, and I'm I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets back into his position and um you know. You well, know. that's what the employees are demanding, right? Like right. there are people walking off their jobs who aren't union employees who've organized anyway, and they've walked off their jobs. They're demanding that this guy be reinstated as CEO because they're worried that the new guy is going to ruin the company, that he's the uh, the evil cousin. Uh, he's related. The other guy's name is Arthur as well. So it's Arthur T, who's been demoted uh, or been removed, and now Arthur S is in charge, and apparently that's the evil Arthur, according to the people who are protesting the change. Sure, he's a very nice guy. I don't know. I've never met him, so I wouldn't say I'm sure of anything like that, but... The story from Glastaclam.com. They're giving us kind of the inside scoop, and they've told us the history, the sort of sordid family infighting that has gone <laughs> on in the Demolis family Indeed. right up until today. Remember when I said his employees were fiercely loyal? Well, because unions have fallen out of favor in the states, Market Basket's employees aren't unionized. I don't know if that's the reason for it. I suggest that the reason for it is that the Market Basket owners don't want unions in their, uh, in their stores. Uh, they have no recourse. I'd say there's advantages and disadvantages on uh, all sides for you know being you know for employees being unionized. Unionized, but the fact is, is in the private marketplace, unions aren't nearly as popular as they used to be, and I think it's because uh, you know employees realize that it makes it more difficult for them to compete against. Because you're on the team, you're on the market basket team when you get hired there. But unions have a tendency to sort of create a team within the company, and mm, yeah, yeah. Let's come back with more. We can talk more about the union side of things here in a moment. Because even though they didn't have a union, they're certainly acting like there's a union there. It seems very similar. Protests, strikes, work stoppages. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed the results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I know noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. 
A local grandmother is beginning to realize that her family never even looked for a better nursing home. A man leaves a father-daughter dance with a different girl than he came with, and an earthquake late warning system goes off in Haiti. Watch as yet another precious fraction of your life passes mercilessly in front of your very eyes. This is the Onion Week in Review. Shortly after discovering he had locked himself outside of his suburban home Thursday, fully nude claims adjuster David Ronzo delivered a moving and thought-provoking treatise on the frailty of the human condition to a slowly gathering crowd of his neighbors. Ronzo, who initially panicked when he realized he was naked, soon turned and faced confused passers-by and delivered a stirring oration on the grim facts of mortality along with the indomitable nature of the human spirit. In other news, a man is arrested for stealing over $50,000 worth of beards from Hank Williams Jr. A pretty lady is playing hard to follow, and a dog named Murph lives up to his name. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything right here, toll free at 855-450 free. We're talking about a uh, an issue with grocery shelves here in Northeast New England, empty. Uh, at least an, in one particular store, Market Basket, formerly known as Demulus. There's been a long history of uh, inter-family fighting, or intra-family fighting. Anyway, there's uh, two sides of a family, and they've been battling it out for decades over this, uh, some to some extent, over this property, over these stores, over 70 stores uh, in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Relatively popular, uh, loved by the employees, loved by the uh, the customers. At least the CEO was loved by the employees, and then they ousted him. The board ousted the CEO, and now the employees are pretty upset. We're going to continue the story here and also want to let you know about blockchain.info and their new app. You've heard of the blockchain.info app if you've listened to Free Talk Live for the last couple of years. I'm, I've been a big fan of it, and I'm more of a fan now than before because they made it even easier. I mean, Bitcoin isn't too complicated to get into these days, but the nice thing about the Bitcoin marketplace is no one has to ask anybody's permission to get involved. It's a decentralized setup. Uh, it's decentralized to the core, meaning that you know the system itself, Bitcoin itself, is decentralized. There's no Bitcoin licensing agency, so if you wanted to start your own Bitcoin business, you just start your own Bitcoin business. And if you know how to code or you, you know, can hire programmers, then you can create whatever Bitcoin app. Uh, that you want to create. And the folks over at blockchain.info have done a great job of creating a Bitcoin wallet app 
that works on uh, Android phones and iPhone. Uh, the Android phone is the, the one that's got the new version, and it's available at blockchain.com. I've been saying blockchain.info. It's the same company. It's just that blockchain.com is kind of focused on getting the apps out to people, from I what see. I can tell. Okay. So it's an easy way to go and get the app for your phone. If you have not yet gotten the blockchain app, or if you have the older version, you can go and grab the new one at blockchain.com. Assuming your that. Android phone supports it. Yeah, apparently some older phone operating systems with Android, it, the new app does not work for that. And that's always sad when that happens. So, uh, although Mark, your phone still has the old app on it, so that's you right. still have a working blockchain app. It's just yeah. not the new one. I probably should buy a newer phone, but I do have the newer phone model, and the app works great. The new version of the app. So, our toll-free number here tonight is eight fifty-five four fifty free. We heard a moment ago from a raving fan of this grocery chain we've been talking about, uh, the Market Basket chain. Big fan of the, the 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 chain. There are a lot of customers who are big fans. So much so that they're joining the employees. In uh, in strikes and in, in employee uh, protest, employee led protests and things like that. From my understanding of this, yeah, I don't think this is just people who are like, yeah, I love a good strike, um, yay, striking. I don't think that that's those folks, and they're those folks exist. Um, this is a, it by a, from what I can tell, um, by a large margin, people who like this store understand that it's different, love the brand, and don't want that brand changed. In any way, so I I think that that's great. It, but it really, I mean, any business that has this kind of reaction to change, uh, you know, should be thrilled because this is you know people saying we love what you do today. Now, well, I'm sure they're thrilled about that side of it, one side of it. But the, on the other side, their shelves are empty, or at least some of the shelves, produce sections well, shelves are empty. That's going to keep people away from the stores. And maybe they'll if, discover that they like one of the competitors uh, more than they thought. Indeed, this time period. there's no doubt about it. This is a, it's a terrible move on the part of uh, the you know the 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 board of Market Basket. They're getting rid of a beloved CEO, and um, you know customers are not happy about it. And it's uh, it's killing productivity. I mean, you can't in your grocery store business, you can't be out of groceries for a week. So remember, not only did the board fire the loved the beloved CEO Arthur T. Demoulas, but they also replaced him with somebody from Radio Shack, a former executive there. They also uh, brought in someone from Albertsons, as well as firing some of their upper-level people at Market Basket. And according to the story here at GloucesterClam.com, many employees have been with the company for decades, and the company had been known from promoting within, promoting from within. Mm. But it looks like in this recent sweep of the board and the executive positions, Not it didn't so seem like they were promoting from within. They knew that Arthur— Well, they've got a—there's a—the the, the board has essentially been appointed by the— you know the other side of the family, which felt jilted at yeah. one point. Um, the board's been appointed by them because they're fifty-one percent shareholders right. now. And then they booted the the and, good guy out. So the board is on the other side of this, which is the family that basically is not involved in running the company up to this point. They need to get rid of from a you know from a strategic standpoint. They feel like they you know this, this is a you know this is like a royal family uh, you know switch over here. People need to be, you know, heads need to, to fall into baskets and uh, they need to, you know, put new leadership in the way they see it. I don't know if it's going to go as well as they had hoped. The board couldn't have predicted the intensity of what came next. Uh, the employees knew that Arthur S.'s takeover of the board spelled the end of the employee friendly policies as they knew it. They were upset. Despite the lack of union, workers started protesting. They threatened to walk off the job if the board didn't reinstate Arthur T., putting their own blue-collar jobs on the line for one of the state's richest men. Last Friday, the murmurs of work disruption boiled over into a full-scale revolt. Warehouse and store workers showed up at the company's headquarters to protest despite warnings they'd lose their jobs, meaning market baskets deliveries ground to a screeching halt. And it has spiraled from there. Eight workers who organized the protests, supply chain supervisors with a company for 30 or 40 years in some cases, have been fired via a yep. courier service. This has only served to fan the flames. Yesterday, the protests moved to store branches in Gloucester. A protest outside of the crossing market basket grew despite the searing heat. The protesters in Gloucester, at least yesterday, are mostly younger folks, kids for whom market basket was their first job. Single moms brought toddlers. My blog partner Jim showed up this afternoon ostensibly to buy supplies. 
uh, from the store and instead grabbed some photos and video of the hoopla. Think about this. And then they include some pictures of the the protesters outside the store. It isn't exactly the anthracite coal strike of 1902, but how often do you see worker action these days? And not one looking for higher wages or increased benefits, but one in favor of a company leader who the workers felt treated them decently. Here, young people are taking a stand for something that's important to them and being pretty polite and articulate about it. They're risking their jobs. And these are kids who are working because they need to, either saving for college or helping out their own families. Their jobs are massively important to them, but doing what they believe is the right thing is more important. I think that's an interesting point here that, you know, these employees aren't necessarily shouting for higher wages immediately. I mean, they, they to see some that extent they are, they, um, but it's not, it's not, they're getting higher program. wages already. Right. And they see that they could have their wages cut. There's fears around how their working conditions might be in the future, but they're not immediately saying we demand, you know, a higher wage right now today or, you know, demand nope. increased benefits. They're demanding a change of a CEO. I mean, it's a very interesting kind of a protest that's going on here. Yeah, I don't think that if this guy was just a nice guy and ran a normal store mm-hmm. that he would have the people, um, you know, behind him the way he does. I, I think it's interesting the way this author uh, points out this the situation, but... I I mean, ultimately, these these are people who are reacting because they want to continue to be treated better than people in their industry are generally treated. Hmm. So that's the story. That's what's happening on the ground right now. The pictures are being posted to Facebook by various customers of the stores. I don't know why people are still going in to shop there with all the produce gone. I mean, I guess if you need boxed items. for some deals. That's what I'd be doing right now. Mm, good point. Yeah, I wonder what uh, what kind of sales the stores are having just to try to keep people coming through the doors in these uh, these lean times. Did we get some indication of how many of those 71 stores were substantially affected by uh, the goings-on? That's a good question. I would suspect it's a good portion of them, I, but I really have no idea. Maybe there are some stores where the employees are showing solidarity with the new CEO, but it, just, it doesn't seem like no, that would be the case. I can't imagine. Because it could be short-lived. The public is is fickle. I don't think oh, yes. the public cares as much as if, as if they hold on. I think you're, I think you're absolutely right, uh, Johnny Ray. If if the uh, the new leadership holds on um, and you know sticks to their guns, they're gonna get what they want, which is an ordinary grocery chain that is reasonably well set up in seventy with seventy one stores. Let's come back with more here. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Maybe uh, we can do some digging and see if we can find out more information about how many stores are being affected. You can take control as well. More coming up here, including Johnny Ray's game of the week. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation protection. Success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Spring time is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. 
the Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you like right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the Border Patrol meets the Boy Scouts. And we'll tell you what happened with that. The Boy Scouts were armed with cameras. Things did not go well. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. That's uh, again 855-450-3733. We've been talking about a, a kind of a a northeastern drama that has been uh, spiraling out of control here within the last week or so, but it's really uh, goes decades back to an old family fight. Inside the Demolis family, which is a group of uh, folks who were running some market basket stores. That's the name of the brand. It was originally called Demolis, I think, Grocers, and then they changed it to Market Basket. Is something people could spell? Yeah, it's a lot easier to tell somebody how to go to Market Basket than Demolis. So, uh, apparently there's been some internal strife. The uh, one side of the family has been fighting the other side of the family for control of the company over the years. There's been... Backroom deals, lies, you know, cheating, all strippers. There's been all kinds, kinds of crazy. I mean, I'm going to post the links to the stories on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. And we were just kind of talking about some of the aspects of what's really unique about this. And that is that you've got people, uh, as was pointed out in the article, you've got people who are working for this store who are protesting. They're walking off their jobs in protest of the CEO being fired. Not because they want some immediate wage raise or some new perk uh, for being an employee, but because they really liked this CEO and they're willing to put their jobs on the line. Now, there's no no reason why Market Basket's uh, board of directors couldn't just bring in a bunch of new workers, right? I mean, it's it's tough times in the economy. There's all kinds of people that want a job, right? I mean, yeah, but uh, that's a but the customers are also on this. A lot of the customers are on the side of the employees. So if the board tries to screw over the employees if the board doesn't bring back the CEO maybe the customers will punish by not even coming back or Johnny Ray maybe what you're suggesting is the case and that after another two weeks everybody's going to forget about it and just market basket will will suffer right I think the customers are good for a couple of weeks and the story's going to get old eventually and then it's just going to be back to if market basket can can get Food on the shelves, hire new people at competitive prices. The people aren't going to remember this for long enough. I, I think that um, because they're sort of a discount grocer, though, um, I mean, their stores are somewhat Spartan in many ways. Um, and I, 
what do they offer if they don't offer low prices, um, you know, really happy employees mm-hmm. and kind of uh, some specialty items you might not be able to get other places? If you bring in, you'll, you'll destroy the culture of a company by bringing in too many employees at one time. Currently, mm. when you get hired on at Market Basket, you're going to get trained by a Market Basket employee who's been a Market Basket employee for you know some period of time. And they there's a corporate culture that, if you want to call it corporate, but a, a business culture that tends to get passed down over time, good or bad. Yeah. When you bring in a bunch of, you know, for ba- lack of a better word, scabs, in order to, uh, you know, uh, displace these other folks, you're, you're going to have a lot of incompetence because they're... They don't know what they're doing. And you're not going to have, I mean, you go to the average grocery store, you're not dealing with people who are thrilled about where they work. Whereas at Market Basket, they are, as evidenced by the strike over the CEO going away. When, when, when have you seen that happen? There's a response by their new co CEOs, who are, by the way, not people who are promoted from within the company, one of them former uh, executive at Radio Shack and another one uh, former executive at Albertsons, which yeah. is a competing brand. Uh, their co-CEOs have released a statement as of today regarding- We would really like to keep our jobs. Stop this. <laughs> regarding the employee firings at the grocery chain over the weekend, according to the Boston Globe, Market Basket fired several management-level employees on Sunday afternoon by courier after protests to reinstate the Ousted CEO Arthur T. DeMolis have brought some stores' normal operations to a crawl. So maybe they're they're saying some stores. So we don't know, at least I don't know, how many stores have been affected by this. Uh, if you have any kind of insight, you're welcome to share it with us here. The Mullis 855 453 That's right. Uh, many customers have also boycotted the stores in protest of Demolis's firing. The statement says the executive saw no alternative to the firings. Quote, we share many of the sentiments that Arthur T. Demolis articulated in his statement, because the former CEO also made a statement. The success of Market Basket and the loyalty of both its associates and customers is indeed the result of the dedication and hard work of thousands from all ranks of the company. Our cashiers and store associates are as important as senior executives. The individuals who were terminated took significant actions that harmed the company and therefore compromised Market Basket's ability to be there for our customers. Now, I presume the people they had ousted were the people who were leading the the walk-offs, right? Yeah, it sounds that way. Uh, We took the difficult step of termination only after we saw no alternative. We are committed to continuing the tradition of- Of course, they did it rather quickly, (laughs) you know? I mean, this- the, the, the walk-offs uh, happen, I mean, we're only a few days into this, right? Yeah, yeah. This, is, so, this hasn't been going on They saw no well. alternative only after they saw no alternative, but they saw no alternative in a relatively short well, period of time. Well, the other alternative is to reinstate the CEO, right? And apparently right. that's not on the list of options for the new board. Not for the CEOs, right. no. <laughs> the, the, the new co-CEOs do not see the option of uh, reinstating the, the old, old CEO. CEO. What a surprise. So oh, they fired some management that was loyal to the CEO. Right. I mean, you know, this is as bad as Romeo and Juliet. Everybody's getting their bowels handed to him so one of the so the other option besides you know the, one option was do what the customers many of the customers and the employees are demanding and reinstate the ceo thereby resign your your position sure and the other one is take the axe to some of the underlings and that's what they did but they continue to you know puff up their press release here we're committed to continuing the tradition of excellence and dedication that has been built over several decades we strongly encourage all associates to return their focus to market baskets customers their needs and expectations we understand the strain and emotion facing market basket associates we know and understand that trust and acceptance are earned and cannot be demanded or imposed (laughs) well that's a tough statement from a ceo uh, co-ceos who've never worked for the company before oh and ones that have handed out eight heads at this point yeah. right like you know this is not eight a good heads start. on eight platters not looking um, good we we understand that you need we need to build up trust over time <laughs> here are eight of your favorite Im- managers <laughs> trust us we've got your back employees the rest trust of you. us or the gallows are next for you <laughs> for whom does the bell toll we are committed to earning the trust and acceptance of our associates and market baskets customers and hope that our associates will not judge us on our promises or excuse me will judge us not on our promises but on our actions 
as we move forward. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It is fun to uh, to watch this, although it's tragic, you know, for the, for the people involved. I mean, I I presume the paychecks are still being handed out, but how, you know, how are the customer bases doing? I mean, how are the store's sales doing? They can't be doing very well right now with some of the employees uh, on hold, striking, others not coming to work, etc. Food not making it onto the shelves. Yikes. Ian, I have a story from my own life that's a little bit similar to Please. this market basket fiasco. It it uh, it illustrates well the the difference in relative popularity of myself and Arthur T. I was in the working in the meat department at an Ingalls market back home in Asheville. Ingalls is the brand name of the grocer. Yeah, Ingalls. Yes, I N G L E S. Okay. Got it. And I was in the meat department, and some things developed, and I was. Demoted to to meat wrapper. This was just more of an effective thing. What were you, the manager? Of I was the a meat cutter. No, I was cutter. a meat cutter. And <laughs> I didn't know that there was a there was a difference. There's a hierarchy in the meat. The wrapper. Wrapper. I, I cut it. You wrap it. Yeah. A, a meat cutter is somebody who's got skill and yes. speed. Ah. A meat cutter is is what people call a butcher. Right. Um, <laughs> they a butcher kills animals. A meat I cutter see. creates. Uh, cuts of meat yeah. from that animal. You gotta and, know the parts and yep. where to cut and stuff, right? But but people call him a butcher. So I was brought on from the from the overnight stock crew. I can tell this is gonna be a good story. I'm gonna put you on hold for a moment, Johnny Ray. We're gonna go to Chris. He's in Connecticut. Uh, Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. We'll get to Johnny Ray's meat here in a moment. Hey, good evening, guys. I, I was just calling. I wanted to commend the bravery of these non-union voluntary strikers, and you know they. Some of them, it sounds like, paid the ultimate price and losing their job. Mm-hmm. They don't really hear that anymore. You, you hear a lot of unions that are very organized and demanding things from the government and, you know, protectionism and their wages and their prevailing wages and what have you. And it really sickens me as somebody who's kind of in the trades. I'm, I'm really an anti-union kind of guy. I think they've distorted and destroyed markets at this point. But um, this well, is like old-fashioned, voluntary... Yeah, well, this is an interesting. I'm glad you brought this back around because it reminds me of uh, a discussion we should have here. We can continue it coming up in hour nice. number three. Um, so if you want to hang on for that, you're welcome to, Chris. But it, it, yeah, what's interesting about this, uh, another interesting uh, aspect is how essentially kind of a temporary union has been formed here. The employees are self organizing and they don't need that overhead of the union. You know, they haven't been paid. No one's paid a union due ever at Market Basket, but yet. They are having an effect. They are organizing quickly. They're coming together in a decentralized, to some extent, manner. And they're doing things that unions do without all the overhead. That's pretty cool. You know Bella Wood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bella Wood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bella Wood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bella Wood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and black forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest to you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Do you remember when summer road trips meant loading up the family in the car and playing hours of I Spy and License Plate Bingo? I found Alaska. America's Best Value Inn invites you to share stories and photos from memorable summer trips now through September 15th at americasbestvalueinn.com. You'll be entered for a chance to win free stays at any of our 1,000 hotels, gift certificates from TA and Petro Stopping Centers, and other fun prizes. Share your memories and make your own this summer at America's Best Value Inn. I Spy and ABVI. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 21st, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,317 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $621. Antiwar.com reports the U.S. brokered deal aimed at saving Afghanistan's crooked presidential election took a big hit yesterday as the Independent Election Commission has halted the audit of ballots just days after it began. The halt was announced after the monitors on the side of Ashraf Ghani walked out over a complaint about the method of checking ballots for fraudulent ones. Rival candidate Abdullah Abdullah, whose campaign uncovered evidence of ballot stuffing, is seeking a broader number of ballots thrown out in some cases, while the Ghani campaign, which is apparently winning going into the audit, wants to limit change as much as possible. Abdullah is seeking to throw out ballots in districts which had overwhelming victories for one side and more votes than eligible voters, though the lack of reliable data on how many people live in some districts makes that a difficult proposition as well. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. CNN reports two of America's most famous government whistleblowers made a plea to hackers, help future insiders secretly expose wrongdoing. Daniel Ellsberg, who famously released the Pentagon Papers, and former NSA contractor Edward Snowden spoke to a packed crowd of computer experts on Saturday at the Hackers on Planet Earth conference in New York City. It was a call to digital arms, create easy-to-use software that lets insiders spill secrets of corporate or government malfeasance to journalists or politicians without getting caught. Ellsberg said, A lot of blood has flowed because people bit their tongues, swallowed their whistles, and did not speak. You people need to do what you can to make it possible for people to do this without spending their life in prison. A clampdown on government whistleblowers began during the Bush administration and has only intensified. The Obama administration has used the Espionage Act to prosecute whistleblowers who leaked to journalists more than all previous U.S. presidents combined. Ellsberg told the crowd of hackers, You are the people who can make it possible for democracy to survive the attacks on whistleblowers. Snowden, in exile in Russia and speaking via a video connection, urged professionals to develop computer programs that hinder mass surveillance by encrypting all communication, thus making it private. It's a technological answer to a civil rights problem, he explained, saying, you have the means and the capability to build a better future by encoding our rights into the programs and protocol we use every day. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday defended the growing civilian toll in his nation's invasion of the Gaza Strip, particularly those deaths in yesterday's attack on Shujaya, while touting the ongoing war as an historic battle for Israel's survival. Netanyahu insisted that we asked in every way for the civilian population to leave and that Hamas was to blame for every civilian who wasn't able to flee the onslaught. 
Some 50,000 Gazans have already fled their homes, but given the Strip's tiny size and that neither Israel nor Egypt are letting in civilian refugees, there isn't really any place for them to go. Netanyahu went on to insist that the international legitimacy of the invasion was not in question and that Israel enjoys very strong support worldwide for continuing the attacks. This is especially true in the U.S. Senate, which unanimously pushed a non-binding resolution endorsing the Israeli war. The U.S. resolution not only backs the continued Israeli war, but also also demands Hamas end all resistance to the attacks and demands the Palestinian Authority sever all ties with Hamas. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish a TV show where I travel across this great nation eating pork in every one of our 50 states. Join me on my cross-country odyssey as I make our forefathers proud, reveling in life, liberty, and the pursuit of pork. You really taste the cooked pork. This stuff is fantastic. I'm a big salt fan. Let's pork! We're tasting prime pork dishes in every state in the Union, and I couldn't be more excited for this once-in-a-lifetime tour. You're going to be right here with me, seeing everything I do and watching every pork I taste. I'm Jim Haggerty. You know me as the host of Today Now, but I've also eaten in a ton of restaurants. Now I'm heading out on the road. My mission, find the best pork our country has to offer. Watch Jim Haggerty's Porkin' Across America at youtube.com slash the onion. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want right here, toll free, 855 450 free. Coming up, Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. Plus, New York Police Department going to go through a retraining, allegedly, after one man was killed by uh, police. I believe he was killed uh, for the dastardly crime of selling some Lucy's, aka some loose cigarettes. Oh. Or at least he was allegedly selling Lucy's. I don't know if he'll ever, uh, you know, nobody ever has to prove the case now. He's dead. Uh, So we'll give you that story here in a little bit. We are continuing the discussion of uh, what's happening here in the Northeast with a grocery chain that is under much uh, difficulty at the moment. Their employees, many of them have walked out. Others have refused to, uh, to come to work. The customers are joining the employees in the parking lots and they're joining the protest. The employees aren't protesting asking for more money. They're protesting asking for the former CEO, Arthur T. DeMolis of Market Basket uh, fame, to be reinstated after the board of directors ousted him and replaced him with two CEOs, co-CEOs, who were brought in from outside of the company. And then they immediately fired eight of the people who were seen as some sort of the uh, uh, the leaders in this, this protest movement. Again, Market Basket is not a unionized store, so it's kind of interesting, and we, uh, we did lose our caller over the, the break there. Who had brought up the point about the uh, the union not being present in this store, but yet here we have union sort of like activities happening, where essentially a union of the moment uh, has been formed. It makes it seem much more genuine, doesn't it? Well, yeah, because the union otherwise is just this big, seems like a big money sink. Oh yeah, we're gonna take care of you workers. We're here for you now. Pay your dues. Well, I, I think that I think unions. Uh you know what i feel like unions do generally in the private sector is is that they they're they're effective in getting the company to do what they want which is to benefit the workers so i don't think they're a money sink in the short term but i think in the long term they make a company less competitive because all you know, keep on giving your employees what you what they want which is more money more days off and you know i mean whatever employees want generally isn't um, for the company to be more lean and competitive it's for them to get more benefits and take away wages from those nasty uh, management folks and oftentimes we'll see things like these companies just they just go under um, and that's why you have far fewer companies in the uh, the marketplace if if companies saw a benefit to having CEOs if it was good for business uh, excuse me uh, unions th- instead of good paid CEOs you'd see a lot more of that 
But apparently those companies are being outcompeted in the marketplace. So, Johnny Ray, you were telling a story, and then there's some other interesting aspects to this market basket protest that the employees and the customers are engaging in that I think are, are worth focusing on to bring to your attention. But first, Johnny Ray, you had just begun to tell us in the last hour, and it, I didn't want to just short shrift your story. I wanted to make sure you had enough time to get it out. You were working in a meat department as a meat cutter. And this was in North Carolina, and at the time, this was uh, for some other company. This is not Market Basket's different grocer. Right. Um, you were a meat cutter. You were demoted to meat wrapper. Basically, I had come on from the stock crew overnight, and and mm -hmm. and and I had come in to be trained in how to be a meat cutter. I was told that that was very good money, and it was. You know, a man kind of wants to learn from a butcher how to how to cut meat. It's like one of those art of manliness type things that you'd you'd really like to have under your belt. Okay. And so I came on and I was, uh, you know, cutting chicken and beef and so forth, and doing a little little meat wrapping, and uh, and, and then it turned into all wrapping and I wasn't cutting meat at all anymore so I was I was demoted but it was sort of without me really knowing when it happened but they didn't cut your pay though no my no my pay stayed the same I see and were you ever given a pay increase for learning how to cut meat or was that just like they just gave you extra responsibilities and no increase no there was the 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 stock crew was a pretty demanding job and I was getting paid stock crew money I see so I was upset about it, and the 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 relationship I had with the meat manager deteriorated. And I one day told him where he could get off, and then and it wasn't any place nice. And for some <laughs> reason, I was shocked, shocked that uh, that he told me the next day that he thought I would be happier in the produce department. Yeah, what a surprise! So I was uh, I was so angry about it. I called my dad and told him about it because I wanted to go and work for my dad and not work for these awful people anymore. Mm -hmm. and How old were you at this time? I was probably in my late twenties. Okay, twenty six, twenty seven. So I, not too long ago then. No, but I was. Uh, when I look back on it, I, I'm embarrassed a little bit by by how indignant and and mm. and offended I got about the whole thing, especially the next part. I talked to my dad a couple of days later. I was in my fresh new produce uh, apron, bringing produce out, and dad comes in and he's got some steaks in his cart, and I just thought. Dad, how could you? <laughs> how could you buy steaks from that man? You've crossed the picket line, Dad. Exactly, and that's my that's the story. Oh, we we we. <laughs> so we wait, you didn't say anything to him. You just thought about you thought. Daggers. Yes, I, yeah, I didn't I didn't say anything to Dad. Me and the meat manager had an had a real icy relationship for months, and then Christmas rolled around, and in the back room there was turkey and hot stuff for for employees to come in and eat on their break, and I went in and I just said you know exchange some pleasantry with him with a little warmth and then that was it we were friends from then on a little ple pleasantry and warmth goes a long way yeah you know i think it's interesting is um when apologies are due some people will attempt not to do them and i'm not saying you owed anybody an apology i'm just uh i, I don't know i wasn't there i don't know who owed wh whom ap apology but i i always i don't like it when somebody doesn't want to talk about whatever the problem was, it mm. makes me uncomfortable. Really, you just want to you just want to chit chat now, huh? And I oh, so they'll talk to you, right? But well, they won't talk about the issues, what right? Well, well, I mean, what Johnny Ray is sort of describing here is is yeah. uh, you know sort of the forgiveness on uh, um, you know the the way that it goes about, and and some people do this. Some people will go, well, just sort of you know, I'll talk to him again and be nice. But for me, there's always this this veil, this thing that's in mm. between, and I want to talk about that thing, whereas other people don't want to talk about it at all. And I think it really has to do with sort of upbringing and well, maybe they dodging were in the an wrong. issue. Maybe that maybe the other person was in the wrong and they don't want to talk about it. Maybe they, they were. were wrong and they don't want to admit it. Maybe they were, but if I was in the wrong, I really sort of have to know. I mean, we're all learning how to deal with people here on mm -hmm. planet Earth, right? And I, I mean, the, how do you find out the proper way to deal with people? The 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 the, the finer error? points. The only way you're going to do that is by talking about what it is you like and don't like about this last interaction. How did you act? How did I act? And, um, you know, 
Those are those are important things to know. I please do me the favor of having that conversation. I think in my case, we had we said pretty much everything we wanted to say the or at least I did the day before I got fired. Okay. And from the meat department. Yes, the day before I got fired from the from the meat department. And so we had given each other our opinions and we knew where the other one was coming from. Did he decide you just didn't have what it takes to cut meat? Yeah. Really? Yeah, cuz I was uh, I don't know if he was right or wrong, but I was certainly slower than he mm. and his uh, and his henchmen, as you know, his number two were. I would be careful with the cutting meat too. Right. Uh, it was it was exciting though. Um, but we had said we had we had said what we wanted to say that day, and gotcha. then just agreed to disagree. And then that day, I walked into the break room. He kind of leaned back and put his crossed <laughs> his arms as he looked at me because he was prepared for some another stare down or something yep. and i just said uh, oh got some turkey here huh and he yep. was like yeah yeah come get you some <laughs> <laughs> north carolina i had a similar a relatively similar situation um but uh, there was no opportunity to demote me because i was in the lowest position possible i worked at a restaurant <laughs> as a dishwasher mm. and they had never experienced someone who was as slow as i was in oh, washing wow. dishes <laughs> but where do you send the dishwasher <laughs> i my hands actually um but like the 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 skin would come off my hands and like you know just rip into shreds and i was bleeding and i couldn't do this this work i did it for like two and a half months and i just couldn't do Uh, it we'll come back with more here in moments they couldn't fire me toll free number is 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 what about busser i mean that's not a hard one they didn't but they didn't move me there maybe it's too old we'll come back with more free talk live i'm chuck woolery You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and Black Forest laminate for only $0.49. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. You know Bellawood Flooring for... Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want, toll-free. Maybe you've been involved in one of these worker conflicts. Market basket stores in northern New England are uh, in trouble right now. Apparently, quite a few of the stores are without product, or at least significant amounts of product in the produce sections. Employees are protesting. Customers are joining in the protest. There's actually a video over at bostonglobe.com with one of the customers I'll play some of the audio from it here in just a moment to give you an idea of how involved people are getting in this. It's pretty crazy. You know, if I was uh, the competition, I'd have uh, I'd be paying people to go out there and protest. And protest? Yes. Well, the competition is, uh, according to another story that I was looking at during one of the breaks, the competition uh, is obviously experiencing quite a bit of uh, increased foot traffic, lots more customers coming into the stores, and they are also unable to uh, to g- keep the stores, uh, sh- the shelves stocked. There's empty shelves at the regular stores that aren't having problems with employee walkouts simply due to customer demand. There are basically three ordinary grocery stores in this town. There's a high-end co-op thing, but there's basically three grocery stores. Mm-hmm. And when you take the business from a very popular grocery store and send it to these other two stores, they're going to have a very difficult time keeping up. Yeah, each one of those stores tries their damnedest to buy exactly what they need and no more. So, uh, if you care about online privacy, we'll get back into the uh, the protests here in a moment. You need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and ProXPN encrypts your data meaning that your internet service provider, which is right now likely spying on you and recording every single website you visit, every search term that you enter, maybe keeping that data for up to five years in some cases. You can stop that from happening by using ProXPN and their free software. Go and grab it at ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Plus, Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but uh, you can get you can get ProXPN working with Linux as well. So it encrypts your data, meaning that nobody can spy on you uh, anymore. In fact, uh, pr- the folks over at ProXPN do not keep records of your online habits, unlike your internet service provider, who probably is. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Now, there's a free level account. You can just go and sign up and try it out, but it's limited in bandwidth, and there's some other limitations on the free account. When you're ready to upgrade to premium to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to access, and the ability to privately torrent, then use our discount code, FTL20. That gets you 20% off the price of the premium account at proxpn.com slash FTL. Again, promo code FTL20. And uh, you use that code, you buy the annual plan, the price breaks down to 5 bucks a month. It's an amazing deal. So we've got uh, a little bit more here that I'd like to share about the market basket situation. We're summing up uh, what's basically a week's worth of protests and movements by the, uh, the store's employees in favor of reinstating the ousted CEO, Arthur T. DeMoulis, uh, there are not only uh, the store employees that are getting involved, but customers as well. Here's an excerpt from the video over at bostonglobe.com. Everything is gone. There isn't any. It's all gone. When you walk in here to a family store that you've shopped for 20-something years and you see it like this, it scared me. It scared me so much 
that I came back and I said, I have to do what I can do. Who wants to sign to keep the store going? He now, did. I know he did. This woman is walking around. Think of how unusual this is. Most stores have no soliciting signs on them. Larger stores like this, you ever walk sure. in, you see on the side of the door when you're walking in, no soliciting. That means you can't go around asking people for, oh, I don't know, signatures or, you know, pitching them a product or something like that. That's an inappropriate thing to do generally on somebody else's property is to go there and, without their permission and start hitting up their customers for stuff, right? Like the, the lowest level of this is, of course, the panhandler who stands outside of a store asking people asking for, for cigarettes, money. Yes. Uh, but the, you know, the upper levels of this are people who are, you know, trying to get signatures for uh, petitions or Let whatever. Let me tell you about her life. So this lady is a customer of the store walking around the store with a petition in her hand, pitching the idea of signing this to the customers inside the store. She's allowed to walk around and not a single uh, store employee, or at least not that I've seen, talks to her about this. I mean, if you were to walk into somebody's store and do this in any other circumstance, you'd be rightfully asked to leave. But the employees have no interest in asking this woman to leave. As far as they're concerned, she's doing them a favor. Because she's walking around with this petition, which is asking for the reinstatement of the CEO, which is what the employees want. It's, it's interesting. Generally. Right. Interesting things are happening here. In fact, there's uh, apparently a flyer that's being handed out by the store employees to their customers. Quote, here's the actual handout that they're they're giving to customers. Due to the recent events following the ouster of our CEO and other top management, we kindly ask you to stop shopping with us temporarily until this issue is resolved. We appreciate your patience and understanding during this troubled time. We are confident that by all sticking together, we will win our fight and once again be the market basket we all know. We stand as one. Any concerns or comments can be forwarded to our new CEOs at the following phone number. <laughs> and then they give the contact info for the CEOs. You know, I think it's a good plan, and um, you know, once people's shopping habits change, it can be hard to change them back. I think the only thing that's going to get them to change it back is to give them what they want. Your toll-free number here for your thoughts. Certainly welcome at 855-453. And I just want you to think about, um, okay, so these employees are well taken care of. They get uh, good benefits. They get a bonus. Um, mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they, they say that they're pretty good about uh, family leave time things, too. And I want you to consider how much many businesses across the United States could benefit from treating their employees in this fashion. You know, you have this uh, sort of Costco versus Walmart, uh, you know, conversation that goes on. And I think that you really do see a benefit for many companies in treating their employees very well because you get employees. You get the best employees. You get the best employees. You retain those employees over time. You want happy employees on your floor, not angry employees. I think that you. I think that the best thing that uh, you know, generally, you can't. Nobody can do this. Not all businesses can do this. Some businesses really do have to. You know be bottom feeders and take the worst of employees and pay them low <laughs> wages because otherwise um, everybody's trying to do the same thing. But I think that the best thing to do is to treat your employees well, pay them well, give them the leave they need um, in order to you know have good family lives and this kind of thing, and fire the bottom 10% uh, of uh, you know performers or 5% or whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. You keep them going. That way you're keeping new blood in that does well because this is going to create a good corporate atmosphere. For the second time in four days, this story from Boston.com, thousands of Market Basket employees flocked to Tewksbury to protest the firing of former Market Basket CEO Arthur T. DeMoulis and demand his reinstatement. Leaders of the employee movement who were fired by Courier by the company's current leadership late Sunday afternoon. They keep mentioning that. It's like being broken up with by, uh, by via text. Yeah. Said their <laughs> fight must now head to the stores. There appeared to be growing momentum for a boycott of stores at the rally. Employees had previously encouraged customers to continue to shop, but organizers of the rally gave several minutes for state politicians to speak in support of a boycott, which they had previously endorsed over the weekend, and the idea was met with cheers. More than 30 elected officials have signed on the boycott proposal at this point. Meanwhile, Joe Guerin, a senior grocery buyer who was fired Sunday, and his wife both endorsed the idea, and their calls were met with cheers. And then they uh, gave out this note that I was talking about earlier, urging customers to temporarily stop shopping at the stores to put pressure on the CEOs. We'll come back with more here in moments, and also they gave contact information 25,000 associates against five directors, says one longtime ousted employee. This is Free Talk Live. 
This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want toll free at 855-450 free. The Boy Scouts encounter the Border Patrol and the Scouts are armed with cameras. We'll tell you what happened. And also you can join us online at freetalklive.com. With you in the studio tonight, by the way, it's Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. Don't forget, on our website, you get to create the content. You can you can actually submit news stories, blog posts, YouTube videos, whatever you want, whatever link online, you submit it on our website, and then other listeners can vote 
whether they like or dislike it. And the most liked we will hopefully see, and then maybe we'll talk about it on the radio waves here on Free Talk Live. So go to freetalklive.com to get interactive. I think we uh, have, I think, exhausted the topic. There's some more stuff that uh, I'm sure will develop with the market basket situation as uh, this grocer, uh, grocery chain is suffering big time uh, due to some upheaval inside the board of directors, employees, and customers are protesting. Some are not coming to work. And what will that all result in? We will let you know as it develops here. In other news, photography is not a crime.com. Always good for liberty oriented content. Uh, yeah, even you know Carlos Miller. I don't know if he's a libertarian, but uh, certainly his topics not entirely. No. Uh, his topics are very freedom friendly on this particular website. It's very well, freedom of speech oriented, very freedom of the press. This is based. a topic that is there's a lot of contention, and its time has really come. Is, is that the idea of you know, harassing, arresting, jailing, fining people who are taking pictures? It's really, it's ridiculous, and. It's uh, you'd be surprised how many law enforcement officers out there just don't get that people are you know the public while they're being paid while while the police officers are being pay, paid public money to do the public's will on public property they don't think the public should be able to take pictures of them and video of them while they're doing it. So the story actually originally comes from KCCI.com, Des Moines, Iowa. A Central Iowa Boy Scout troop just returned from a three-week trip they'll likely never forget. Wow, three weeks. About 10 days into the trip, an innocent action by one of the nearly two dozen scouts at the Canadian border into Alaska set off a chain of events that led to a U.S. border official pointing a gun at a scout's head. Boy Scout Troop 111 leader Jim Fox spelled out what happened to him in the Mid-Iowa Boy Scout Troop as four van loads of scouts and adult volunteers tried to drive from Canada into Alaska. Fox said one of the scouts took a picture of a border official, which spurred agents to detain everyone in the van and search them and their belongings. Fox said the agent immediately confiscated his camera, informed him he would be arrested, fined possibly $10,000, and 10 years in prison. Fox really? Said that you can't take pictures at a border stop? Terrorism, Mark. Terrorism. Fox I, said he was told. What that about these a, uh, trucks that have video that uh, you know just runs all the time inside the cab, out on <laughs> the front, that kind of thing? Well, there's plenty of video footage of border patrol agents out there. I mean, you can find all kinds of yeah. footage of people refusing to consent to border patrol searches and refusing to answer the border patrol's questions, their invasive questions. So the agent uh, confiscated the camera, threatened to arrest him, etc. Fox said he was told it was a federal offense to take a picture of a federal agent. Can you show me the law? Not wanting things to escalate, Fox said he didn't complain. Another of the scouts was taking luggage from the top of a van to be searched when something startling happened. He hears a snap of a holster, turns around, and hears this agent, both hands on a loaded pistol, pointing it at the young man's head. Fox said What they, is wrong with these people? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he thought he was going for a weapon or something like that. Right, apparently. at the top of the vehicle? I mean, all, yeah, these Cub Scouts are going to kill us all. <laughs> Oh, it would be a dastardly plot for some terrorists to dress yeah, right. up as uh, some Boy Scouts. <laughs> where are you going to Where are you going to come up with all those white kids to dress up yeah. as uh, <laughs> as Cub Scouts to uh, assassinate the Border Patrol agents? State actors are they're not living in the real world. They're liable <laughs> to do all kinds of goofy stuff. I, I, you do think? I mean, doesn't this sound for all the world like people just trying to establish dominance over others? Yes, absolutely. It's sick. Uh, and Carlos Miller over at Photography is Not a Crime continues the story here. He quotes KCCI pointing out that Charles von der Heide, the Mid-Iowa Council Boy Scouts of America, said Troop 111 learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> Watch Whoa. out for government agents. They're no, dangerous. No, no, That's not the position of the Boy Scouts. Yep. As much as, you know, it'd right. be cool if it was, but the Boy Scouts swear an oath to the government. Yep. To I do my this. best, to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the laws of the pack. Yeah, I remember this when I was uh, uh, kind of against my own will, uh, forced by my parents to go into the Boy Scouts at one point, but I did not complete the actual rank of Boy Scout, which is the first rank that you're supposed to get. Like, they give you the patches or whatever. Mm -hmm. I never even got that rank because I refused to uh, repeat their mantra Whatever their indoctrination God, really? thing was, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I was thirteen, maybe at the time. What a little iconoclast you yeah, were! I... Yeah, man. But it was more about the under God thing than it was the state. Even uh -huh. though I still didn't like the flag, I knew I didn't. I didn't like the flag. I didn't like pledging to the flag. And um, anyway, according to the story here, uh, the quote from the head of the Mid Iowa Council of Boy Scouts says this. 
Quote, we want to make sure they follow the rules. A scout is a good citizen. It would be a great lesson <laughs> These in Border civics. Patrol agents, on the other hand, are not. <laughs> it would be a great lesson in civics for that young man and that troop, unquote. So the What's boys, a great lesson? Having a gun pointed in his head? Yeah, do what you say. Uh, do what is told to you or else you'll be shot. I mean, that's your civics lesson, I guess. I mean, it's really what it all boils it's down to. It's a good right? civics lesson. Uh, a BS statement from a BSA official says uh, Carlos Miller over at Photography is Not a Crime. The Boy Scouts should be demanding an apology and an investigation into the incident. Instead, they are cowering. The incident took place, and then he kind of recaps what happened. But apparently, the agent was fearing for his life, which is why the well, agent it's fine. You know, as pulled- long as there's got 13 year olds that uh, are getting camping equipment off the top of a car, you're, it's fine to do a fear for your life, sure. Right. So what was happening was the Boy Scout was trying to assist the agent in pulling the luggage down from the top of the car, so they could help. You know, them in consenting to the search of their stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Within a second, the Boy Scout was staring down a barrel of a gun, a crisis that is not covered in the Boy Scout handbook. The agents detained the scouts for four hours, ensuring they were free from any contraband or weapons before they were allowed to proceed with their trip Don't into they have Alaska. Knives? Uh, maybe. Fox said one of the scouts took a picture of the border official, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, so there you go. That's uh, That's the story from the side of the road at the border as the Boy Scouts went up against the Border Patrol and backed down, just like it's their good little citizen duty to do. And this is one reason why, I, if I had kids, I would never want uh, any boy uh, sons or whatever involved in scouting. Not only that, but also the fact that they're intolerant towards gays and they're a religious organization. There's just not much to like about the Boy Scouts. Well, there's a lot to like about the Boy Scouts. You pointed out the things there are to not like about the Boy Scouts, and I think that that you're absolutely right. But there are a lot of great things about the Boy Scouts. Well, I, have I just a lot wish of we had others. You know, there's the Pork Scouts. I don't know if you're aware of this organization. No, it's We're, like it's, a porcupine it's thing for New Hampshire. Incipient. Um, well, it's try, it's they're, they're attempting to create it. Mm. Um, I mean, it's we're very early on in the Pork Scouts. We, but, so you're involved in this. Well, I I I, I like the idea. Uh huh. You much have a as, knife. Yep. Davi Barker of, mm-hmm. uh, of Bitcoin Not Bombs. Now, this is, uh, is something that, badges. just to yep. clarify, the pork thing is like a porcupine. It's short for porcupine. That is the, uh, the, the kind of the mascot of the Free State Project, mm-hmm. which is the reason why the three of us are here sitting in the same studio together. It's the Free State Project that is bringing liberty-minded people to New Hampshire and getting active. And there's a lot of families that are moving here, and they're looking for things for their kids to do, right? Is that kind of the genesis of the idea? Yeah, I, I mean, at this point, I think it's really just mostly an idea, waiting for somebody to sort of do stuff. Hmm. Um, but I, I think it's a great idea. I see. Um, is it for girls or just uh, just I'm boys? sure. I mean, I can't imagine that. Uh, it, I don't have a girl. It wasn't, it wasn't one of my first questions, but I can't imagine that they wouldn't. I think it's sort of silly that they separate the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts from each other. I mean, what's that all about, really? Well, they don't want them kissing and hugging and stuff, touching, <laughs> well, holding hands. Okay. I guess <laughs> that's what You know what, what that about. leads to. We don't want human interaction. Right. <laughs> God, that'd be terrible. So, well, Johnny- I mean, uh, it kind of shakes out that way naturally when they're very young, doesn't it? I the boys people, and the girls hang out it, with each other and well it, hang out with themselves, I should say, and not with each other. I don't want it, doctor being played. It's it shakes out that way generally in life. I think that uh, oftentimes you know men and men and women tend, tend to sort of self segregate. But you know what? They ought to have a badge for playing doctor in the Pork Scouts. Oh God. More coming up here. Eight fifty five. Four fifty three. With you. <laughs> Inappropriate. Johnny Ray, were you ever a Boy Scout? No. Ah, okay. Well, you can't relate here. 855 450 free. Maybe you were a Boy Scout and you've got some comments on this. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Are there any Boy Scout troops that would have actually stood up for their rights in this situation? This is Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them 
them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Negotiation isn't just something union leaders and sports agents do. Your entire day is a series of negotiations. If you have young children, you know that. In fact, your kids can teach you a lot about negotiating with grown-ups. According to the world's greatest negotiator, Herb Cohen, author of You Can Negotiate Anything. Herb says that kids understand the process of decision-making within an organization organization. When one parent says no, they'll ask the other. And Cohen says children persist and persevere. And like smart negotiators of all ages, kids know that no is an opening bargaining position. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, and you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you there. You can go and get interactive on our bulletin board system uh, at bbs.freetalklive.com. There's also the new Free Talk Live Amplifier group on Facebook, which you can become a part of, but you have to be an amplifier first. So go to amp.freetalklive.com to do that for as little as five bucks a month. It makes a big difference for us when you do so. So thank you in advance at amp.freetalklive.com. The Boy Scouts are cowering in their encounter with the Border Patrol rather than standing up for their rights, rather than teaching these boys, these young men about their rights and, you know, the freedom of speech, freedom of the press. This is one you don't even have to go very far in the Constitution to get to these rights. So, you know, it wouldn't well, be a complicated review. How but. about the re ridiculous overreaction by a Border Patrol agent and pulling out his uh, service weapon and pointing it at the head of a young man, 13, 14, 12, 13 years old, for trying to help him to go through his luggage? Yeah. 
So uh, Boy Scouts were stopped as they were trying to enter Alaska. This, so therefore, this sounds to me like U.S. Border Patrol, by the way, just to be clear. It's U.S. Border Patrol treating them uh, like this. And uh, just a horrifying encounter. But what's more horrifying was the reaction of the Boy Scouts head in uh, Iowa there. And that is that, oh, our Scouts are good citizens and they are, what a, we want to make sure they follow the rules. It doesn't matter what the rules are. The rules can be anything contrary to what the actual Constitution says. That's pretty much and, what the Boy Scouts is, of, you know, was founded on. It was really it's all about that, uh, you know, <laughs> do what you're told yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I love the 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 camping and the knots and right. uh, you know so much of what the 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 scouts are about. But then the whole fascism thing. The you know? fascism things right in there. It's all wrapped up in there. Mm-hmm. So uh, great to hear that apparently in New Hampshire you're saying there's at least the rumblings of a organization that will presumably be of a liberty oriented mindset and also teach the scouting stuff like the the firing the, the making fire and the tying knots and all the camping. Stuff. All that important stuff with a pro freedom message that's mixed in. That's what's happening here, Mark. That's what's uh, that's the proposal. That's that's what's on the table. Yeah. So somebody, so it's waiting for somebody to kind of take the lead with it. Is that I think right? so. Yeah. The All pork right, scouts. So, so maybe that's you. Maybe you're the person who wants to help head up that organization. You haven't made the move yet. Get on up here to New Hampshire. Go to freestateproject.org and learn about a movement, the movement of liberty-minded people coming together. To the same place so we can be more free. Johnny Ray, more freedom would mean more leisure time for video games. Something you know it. that I wish I could uh, make time for, but I find it challenging these days. But you have made time, Johnny Ray, recently for another game, and you've got the game of the week this week. Yeah, Ian, I have been playing Hearthstone ever since I first started talking about it. Oh, now that was months ago. Yes, it's a free to play card game from Blizzard based on the World of Warcraft lore. Okay. And uh, I, I I make time to, to, to try some new things, but I go back to Hearthstone again and again. I play it every wow. night. So, Ian, do you re- what do you remember about it? I remember that it is, well, as you said, a card game. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I don't recall if it's a trading card game. I don't recall that detail. Right. It, it w- I would call it a collectible card game. Okay, so there are cards that you uh, so, so when you start the game, there there are cards you have not acquired yet that you can get later on. That yeah, kind of thing. yep, and it's completely digital. There's no mm-hmm. physical form of this game. Right. Um, there's not much else I remember besides that you really enjoy it. You can play it online with people. Right. It's. Uh, I would say it's similar to. And it's free, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's it's free to play. You can boost your advancement through. Basically, you're playing to get cards, and when you play, you'll you'll get a little in-game currency. You buy a pack of cards, and there's that's how you build your deck. And you can take the ones that are extras. You can only put two of any one card into any deck. Oh, that's interesting. So you can take the extras and turn them into crafting dust, mana dust. I think it's called mana dust, hmm. some kind of special blue dust, and you can make cards that you actually want instead of just getting wow. the luck of the draw that way. And can you have different decks? Like uh, you, yes, okay. you you will have. I think nine. I think there are nine slots hmm. for for a deck, and the reason I'm talking about it now is that there was there's this is like there's Johnny a Ray's game big, of the year. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it absolutely is. There's a big expansion to it, the first one oh. of its kind released today. Mm. Um, and I and I a free jumped expansion? in. Free. It's there's there's basically five parts to it. It's called the Curse of Nexramus, and it is kind of a single player story mode where you're going into this floating cit- citadel that is full of undead and lots of spiders and hmm. so forth. And there's bosses in there that you play against and a boss is just is just a computer controlled card player who's got a bunch of new cards that I've never seen before mm-hmm. and unfair hero powers <laughs> what, what sort of animation the anim- the, the there's two kinds i guess basically when you play one of your cards it kind of magically transforms into something more like a token okay. that that slams down on the board it's got a t- tactile feel to it i think that was by design because it it's you can play it on your ipad mm-hmm. you i pl- i can play it on my tablet you know using my fingers and stuff and i think it might have been designed with that in mind to get the feel uh, but when you play it, the, the the image is static. It's a piece of artwork on a token 
unless you have a golden uh, gold golden I think golden card and a golden card is a card that's actually animated sort of like some newspaper in a Harry Potter movie gotcha was the original Hearthstone a one player experience was there a one player it sounds to me like this expansion it is Hearthstone originally can be a one-player experience. I never play it that way. But was there a plot with the original Hearthstone? No, there was. This is it the first. It sounds like this has a plot involved. Um, it's got, it's got introductory text. Mm-hmm. Maybe a maybe a half a page worth of text, and there will probably be some more installments of that, and a little bit of flavor text for each boss you fight. There's a cinematic at the beginning, mm-hmm. but there's not really a plot unfolding to a great degree, I don't think. Yeah, there used to be a game, uh, Magic the Gathering. There were some online uh-huh. and or offline versions, different games in that world. Hearthstone and is very similar to Magic the Gathering. There was one where you'd walk around on a map. You had a character, and then you'd encounter other guys, and they all had decks that you would then fight these computer-controlled opponents. So it sounds kind it of similar. It is similar to that, yeah. Um Similar, but different. Similar, but different. Uh, Hearthstone is similar to Magic, but the do you have cards, like hit points where you know you get nailed down, or is it like player, when you lose all your bad your guys? Each player starts out with 30, 30 mm-hmm. life, and then you lay some minions down in front of you. Some of them can you know can <clears throat> maybe block, have some kind of special power that will disallow your opponent from dealing damage directly to your face. Okay. And you can interpose your minions, you can cast spells to sort of control the board. That sounds very Magic the Gathering like. The way to win the game is to control the board. If you're if you're worried about every chance trying to hit the other guy's face and you're not controlling the board then then you'll lose. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, very similar to Magic, but it's different. I, I think th- the most important difference I would say, even though I've never played Magic, is that each turn, beginning with the first turn, you have one mana to spend, and then on the second turn you have two mana to spend. Okay. On the third turn you have three, up to so a maximum of ten. So it's yeah. predictable. In Magic: The Gathering, you don't know how much mana you will have, and the mana for those that don't know, what we're talking about mana is what you use at least in Magic to cast spells, to create creatures, to create these walls and things like that. Is it like that in in Hearthstone? Yeah, and um, uh, but but like I was saying, Hearthstone, the the power progression for each player is more regimented. The thing I don't like about Magic: The Gathering is that, uh, and I'm I'm old school. You know, I played that long time ago in in high long ago as high school. Um, the thing I don't like about it is they keep coming out with these new cards, and they come out with more and more ridiculous rules every revision. And so unless you keep up with the new cards that are coming out and keep spending money on these sure. upgrades or whatever, you're going to get stomped by somebody who, like, if I, if I were to come to a Magic the Gathering game today with a deck I built in, you know, 2000... I'd get squashed, even if it was a decent deck back then, because there's all these new abilities that none of my creatures and cards would have. Plus, the numbers are probably um, you know, incrementally higher every year too. You know, so if if your card, if your big bad card's an eight in two thousand mm. in the year two thousand, then big bad two thousand twelve now. Yeah, right. You know, it just moves up a little bit. But I mean, what does Hearthstone do, if anything, to to deal with the the problem of long term players or players who you know don't have kind of this discrepancy between players? strength well the the first and only thing really that comes to mind is that cards don't have to get outdated because they're not physical mm. and in fact with new patches cards will get nerfed or buffed because What's that mean? to nerf something is to make it safer so basically weakening it uh-huh. and then okay. to buff it is to make it stronger so they're adjusting when they adjust, they can adjust it on the fly when they adjust on the fly every and every cards player okay. yeah all right that's interesting hearthstone where does one go to check it out battle net Battle.net. Battle.net. Very cool. And Johnny Ray, uh, thanks, man, for the game of the week. This oh, week. I'm going back to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Enjoy it. We'll come back with more Free Talk Live tomorrow night. You can see us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Are you Free Talk Live. The heavy-handed language that you're speaking out against the government, is I never heard anything like this on the radio. When, when the Founding Fathers decided that the, government, um, that the government of England was no longer servicing their needs, they stopped paying their taxes first. Don't you drive on roads? Don't you, aren't you <laughs> glad you're defended? Such from, a cliche. Uh, 
from the uh, foreigners? Sir, they the stole for- this the man's property. are coming to get me. <laughs> but yeah, they stole these. They, these aren't foreigners I need to be defended from. It's these people down the street calling themselves government that are willing to steal my property from me and burn my house to the ground, which but is what they did to this man. It's not yours. The government owns it. You, I mean, really? I you have, are you them. telling me, sir, that ev- every one of us are actually serfs? We're actually subjects and slaves to the state? Is that what you're telling me? Well, if it sounds good to you... No, that doesn't sound good. I don't accept it. I'm a free man. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 21st, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,317 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $621. Antiwar.com reports the U.S. broker deal aimed at saving Afghanistan's crooked presidential election took a big hit yesterday as the Independent Election Commission has halted the audit of ballots just days after it began. The halt was announced after the monitors on the side of Ashraf Ghani walked out over a complaint about the method of checking ballots for fraudulent ones. Rival candidate Abdullah Abdullah, whose campaign uncovered evidence of ballot stuffing, is seeking a broader number of ballots thrown out in some cases, while the Ghani campaign, which is apparently winning going into the audit, wants to limit change as much as possible. Abdullah is seeking to throw out ballots in districts which had overwhelming victories for one side and more votes than eligible voters, though the lack of reliable data on how many people live in some districts makes that a difficult proposition as well. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. CNN reports two of America's most famous government whistleblowers made a plea to hackers help future insiders secretly expose wrongdoing. Daniel Ellsberg, who famously released the Pentagon Papers, and former NSA contractor Edward Snowden spoke to a packed crowd of computer experts on Saturday at the Hackers on Planet Earth conference in New York City. It was a call to digital arms, create easy-to-use software that lets insiders spill secrets of corporate or government malfeasance to journalists or politicians without getting caught. Ellsberg said, A lot of blood has flowed because people bit their tongues, swallowed their whistles, and did not speak. You people need to do what you can to make it possible for people to do this without spending their life in prison. A clampdown on government whistleblowers began during the Bush administration and has only intensified. The Obama administration has used the Espionage Act to prosecute whistleblowers who leak to journalists more than all previous U.S. presidents combined. Ellsberg told the crowd of hackers, You are the people who can make it possible for democracy to survive the attacks on whistleblowers. Snowden, in exile in Russia and speaking via a video connection, urged professionals to develop computer programs that hinder mass surveillance 
surveillance by encrypting all communication, thus making it private. It's a technological answer to a civil rights problem, he explained, saying, you have the means and the capability to build a better future by encoding our rights into the programs and protocol we use every day. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday defended the growing civilian toll in his nation's invasion of the Gaza Strip, particularly those deaths in yesterday's attack on Shujaya, while touting the ongoing war as an historic battle for Israel's survival. Netanyahu insisted that we asked in every way for the civilian population to leave and that Hamas was to blame for every civilian who wasn't able to flee the onslaught. Some 50,000 Gazans have already fled their homes, but given the Strip's tiny size and that neither Israel nor Egypt are letting in civilian refugees, there isn't really any place for them to go. Netanyahu went on to insist that the international legitimacy of the invasion was not in question and that Israel enjoys very strong support worldwide for continuing the attacks. This is especially true in the U.S. Senate, which unanimously pushed a non-binding resolution endorsing the Israeli war. The U.S. resolution not only backs the continued Israeli war, but also also demands Hamas end all resistance to the attacks and demands the Palestinian Authority sever all ties with Hamas. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Thomas the Tank Engine says he's a little uneasy with his broad autistic following, and a couple has a nest egg of debt to make sure they've got some money to owe down the road. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local video editor James Korf told reporters Wednesday that despite having said goodbye over 10 minutes ago, his friend, Michael Woodward, still remained active on Gchat and had shown no signs of leaving. If it were yellow, it would mean that he hasn't been on the computer for a little while, or if it was red, it would mean he doesn't want to talk, but it's green. I can tell. I can see it right there. Korf later said that he felt briefly relieved when Woodward's chat logo turned orange, but was once again dejected when it became green within seconds. And in this week's op-ed pages, a high school guidance counselor laments the fact that no one in his entire damn school has been molested. In other news, a bed bug feels bad for an area man, but a bug's gotta eat. A development exec wants to see what, where, and how that would look, live, and play out. And a man at the gym is just watching TV. TV. For more, visit theonion.com newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network.